So we're down here with Brody Ma. G'day guys and welcome here to Winton Motorsport Raceway where we are here for High Tech Oils Drift All-Stars Round 3. Beside me today is Matty Kavanagh. We've been here watching the action, mate. How have you found it so far? Dan Mackey, it's been some intense qualifying here so far. The practice yesterday, the qualifying, we come back this morning, a little bit more practice. They're fine-tuning their art and they're getting better and better each lap. Yeah, it was interesting to see. Lots of practice yesterday, and then we had the pro, uh, pro qualifying, uh, followed up by the Pro-Am qualifying. The guys did really well. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But for now, we're going to get on to the championship points and just see how they're tracking. Um, and as we start off, as we start off, we've got Pro-Am, mate. Um, Pro-Am, we've got Brian Crookshank leading. He's got a narrow 21-point lead over Sam Mudge, Matt Murphy, Jory Burkroff, Jason Hendon. Uh, Nathan Ranson, and Bo Gagliani and Nick Clippen in rounding out the top eight there. 
Um, yeah, look, the New South Welshman Brian Cookshank there doing a fantastic job in that BMW. It's just really fine tuned. I mean, no surprise that he is actually a chassis builder as his day job there because the 1.5J and that is on song. We know he's got a new car coming as well. Yeah, absolutely, mate. There's some new stuff in the pipeline from all over the place. We're looking forward to Brian stepping up to uh, to the pro category, mate. I believe you've got the pro points for us to run us through on those. No surprise there. Two from two so far. Brody May are now leading the championship coming out of the round number two at the Bend in South Australia. Matt Harvey, so the two Tasmanians there, one and two. Then he goes down to Jason Barron, who's come out in that beautiful R31 wagon. James Abbott, a familiar sound, a familiar name there in fourth position. Then goes Glenn Omerod in fifth. Sixth is Moel Hawley. Seventh, Dale Campaign, who's only done one round, so that's impressive, and Brendan O'Grady, Bogger O'Grady there, in the eighth spot. Yeah, mate, there's, there's some really good stuff going on there with the guys, there's some interesting names that are in there, some have made it, some haven't made it. Qualifying earlier, we saw Joe Egan taking out the Pro-Am Championship, but with me today, we've got Dale Campaign, who, as you just said, has only done one round, he's already in the points in the top eight. Um, Dale, poll for you today, top qualifier, mate, how was your runs? Yeah, it felt really good. Um, I think the main points I got was on my first run. Uh, we put down a semi-safe one, but still went pretty hard, and it was enough to get the first position. So, yeah, very happy with that. And, mate, there's been uh, a bit of fun and games for you in practice today as well. How's the car feeling? Obviously, a great run yesterday to put it on pole, but you had a bit of an incident in practice this morning. Give us a bit of a rundown about what went down. Yeah, we were trying to get uh, you know into the battle zone and really start pushing hard, and we got uh, a little bit too close and got a little bit stuck behind Aaron Joar, Um and as he transitioned, it kind of sucked me out wide, and we went straight through a water barrier and did a fair bit of damage, but uh, the crew did an amazing job to get it back together. The car's feeling good. Uh, we did a few runs after that with Shembury, and everything feels good, so yeah, can't wait for the battles. Awesome, mate. We look forward to seeing you out in the battles. You always battle really, really well, really, really strong. Uh, we're going to catch up now with Damien Cook and the championship leader, Brody Ma, down in the pits. We're down here with Brody Ma. Uh, Brody, number one in the championship. What a season it's been. Over from Tasmania. But, mate, the car's lot looking good. She's had a rough weekend. Bit battered and bruised around the sides. We saw you out last night with the string lines and trying to get her somewhere pretty underneath. How's the car and how are we looking? Uh, yeah, obviously yesterday didn't go to plan. Actually, pretty much everything that could have went wrong pretty much did. Um, but all the guys come together. Like, massive thanks to all the drift community. We had parts coming from everywhere and uh yeah look, we squared the car up best we could um and now the car's doing really good so hopefully we're uh, in a pretty good spot for the battles today uh we didn't qualify so well uh we still had a few vent parts and issues and stuff going on but look i think i think we'll battle forward hopefully sure so the mindset of someone on top of the championship where do we go for today are we trying to conserve those points are we set to kill oh no we're set to kill 100 yeah. percent. i mean uh, it's a five-round championship, you know, we've, we've went well on two, but still, there's five rounds, so there's no point to start conserving now. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be driving 110% today for sure. Yeah, typical Brody style, we love it. <laughs> Who's your first battle? Uh, up against James Abbott, so I don't know what's going on there, because we'll verse each other, like, all three of the rounds. Um, but, yeah, he totally throws down, so it should be a good battle. Yeah. Brilliant. No worries. Good luck, Brody, for the weekend, and then continue on this excellence in the championship. No, cheers, mate. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, we're down here with Matt Harvey. Uh, great to have you down again, Matt, and the family. Always amazing ambassadors. Uh, bit of a bridesmaid going on this weekend. We're number two in the championship, number two in qualifying. Yep. Mate, what are we going to do to step this up? We're going to push very hard and try and get that top spot today. Um, Brody's had a lot of um, breakages, and obviously going into the wall yesterday hurt the car a lot, So, uh, which, is, which sucks, but... Um, Oh, second's actually been pretty decent for us. We've got a decent battle tree, so we, uh, we're keen for some battles today. Yeah. And second is an amazing achievement in this series, don't get me wrong, but I'm sure you're not here for second. Brody is fast. Brody. He's super fast. Have you got, and does the car have, what we need to do to get on the top set? Yeah, so we've actually done some changes with the suspension this round, and we've also got the new uh, Kumo 730, so, which has been awesome all weekend so far. So we're, we're keen to try the new tyres, and... Um, and get on that top spot for sure. Yeah, sounds awesome. Who you got your first battle? Um, so I've got a Pro-Am guy that's going to step up to the Pro guy. So I think, I know the number, it's number 47. So um, Jamie God Godfrey or something. Okay. So yeah, I'm keen for the guys to step up and uh, yeah. we'll hopefully have a great battle. Yeah, and once again, it's a fantastic thing in the high-tech series is they do offer those opportunities uh, for, for Pro-Am drivers to be able to step up and have a go at that. All the best for the weekend, Matt. Perfect, thank you very much. No worries, thanks mate. 
Uh, we're down in the pits here. We've got some exciting news. Back. Jewer's performance. That includes not only Aaron Jewer, the Beast, but the whole family. It's brilliant to have you back. The Alice has been absolutely foaming all weekend. She looks ready to rip, set the grip. How are you feeling, mate? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, been out for a while. Plenty of work going on building these tough engines. So um, thought I'd bring the family back and sort of help out Victoria here and get Winton back up and frothing again. Yeah, brilliant. It's great. It is amazing to have you and the family back. What's the goal for this weekend? Are we trying to hit clips? Are we trying to spray tyres? Are we just here to have fun? i got a feeling it's a bit of all of the above and hopefully there's some champagne spraying at the end. How are you feeling after qualifying yesterday? Up there in the results. Who's your first battle and where are we heading? Um, I think my first battle is uh, a buy run. Um, but I'm just coming here to have a bit of fun, bring the family out, uh, good weather. Um, yeah, just see if we can blow some rims off at the end of the day. Sounds like a solid plan to me. Aaron, thanks for coming down. Look forward to seeing the results. Worst case scenario, we're going to see a show. No dramas. It's always great to see that long flowing mullet, isn't it, of Aaron Jouar. And great to have him back here in the series, the big horse Barry LS on board, of course. But yeah, we look at those competitors as we spoke to them there with Damien Cook, Matt Harvey. Can he increase his way up in the championship? He's number two at the moment. The two Tasmanians sitting one and two with Brody Mayer in one. So we'll have to wait and see if the Tasmanians will stay there at the end of competition. Well, the big one for me is Dale Campaign, who's come into this only competing in one round, which was at Tail and Bend over in South Australia just a few weeks ago, and he's already made his mark in the championship. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's great to see Dale joining the championship and on a bit more permanent basis now by the sounds of things. He's picked, on a, picked up another sponsor. Um, he's gone and sweet-talked George from High Tech Oils and managed to get him on board, which is helping him make that, uh, that commitment to the series. So with a bit of luck, we'll see him at each of the rounds now going forward. And Dale's a fierce competitor. He always has been. He's always been right there at the pointy end. doesn't matter where he takes that car or whether it's up to the NT, whether it's into a different series. He's always there and he's always always pushing. Um, you always get a lot of flair with Dale, so it's going to be exciting to see how he goes. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing not only Dale, but all of the boys in there. You know, we've got Brody Mars having some issues this time. Matty Harvey, always consistent, always there, always ticking along, and it's good to see uh, Jabbit doing well as well, P4 in qualifying, so he's really pushing well. Um, I know Shembury in the other high-tech oils car, the 350s, have been fighting a few gremlins, but I was chatting to him down the pits earlier, and he was saying that he might be getting a few things sorted out, but looks like we're about to get going with uh, Pro-Am first, Matt. Yeah, well, let's get underway with our Pro-Am cars here at the High Tech Oils Drift All-Star Series. Of course, it is the Zoo Performance Pro-Am, and uh, they do some fantastic products, Zoo Performance, as well. Make sure you get online and check them out. They'll do you all your fuel rails. Uh, we can do, they do couplings, hoses, seat belts, everything you need. And Joe Egan, our number one qualifier, taking on Mitch Budd now. Joe Egan's going to be leading us out in this one. You can see the S13 there. Tries to pull away the big V8 power and Mitch Budd in the chase there. Gets the wheel up on the ripple strip. The transition is nice. There has a bit of a straighten there from Mitch Budd. Joe Egan with some big angle there as he throws it out, trying to hit that out of clipping point. Not a bad run from either of them. Joe Egan laying down a nice run there. Mitch Budd there for a moment. They had to straighten the middle of the front S's here. Obviously, Winton Motor Raceway. Great to be back here as well. And we need to thank Winton Motor Raceway for having the High Tech Drift All-Star Series back once again and letting us enjoy this fantastic track. And a bit of a change from last time, round one, we were in the, the back M's, as we like to describe them, the front S's. Yeah, we moved it up, changed it up. We can't do two two rounds at the same same part of the track. So moving it up, keeping it guessing. The guys like this. It is a really flowing section. Um, it's been set with a little bit uh, a little bit of an easier line this weekend. Um, James Martel stepping up from uh, JDMX Park to lead the guys in in the in the judging this weekend. When I was trying to do a couple of extra things, so he led the line. He's led the briefings. He's done a really good job. And we did talk about it before we arrived at the round. We wanted to set something that was going to induce a really strong chase. So from us from the judges point of view we're going to be looking for them to take that opportunity the lead car needs to be leaving a meter off the curbs um, to allow that chase car to get in there so that's going to be the key things we're looking for is them taking those opportunities and jumping in there um, great to be back here at winton they've been so accommodating the boys at winton raceway and asa they've really helped us out with getting this off the ground and keeping it moving keeping drifting at this venue so um, Super easy to work with, everything they've, they've, done, they've, they've been doing to try and accommodate us. So it's been fantastic, mate. Yeah, great venue just for the supercars as well. It's very gripped up out there. And that's what we notice when we come here to Winter Motor Raceway. And now an addition on iRacing as well. So you can virtually get around there and go around this circuit. So Winter Motor Raceway here in Victoria, fantastic venue. We're so happy to be back and can't thank them enough for having us here. Joe Egan's going to... 
This time be the chase car, and this is going to be the difference here. How's he going to go? Mitch Bud in the lead. He'll have to take off. We'll watch him go through this one. Of course, Mitch Bud there, qualified 17th, made it through against Jacques Ustrasen to make it through into the top 16, and he's done a nice job there. Gets very tied up, leaves a whole lot of room, though, on the final corner. They transition out. Bit of a wheel drop there, it's past the finish of the drift, maybe, that's all, the cone has been knocked over, we'll have to wait and see what the judges say with that one there, but a whole heap of room on that inside left from Mitch Bard, and Joe Egan didn't really take advantage of that, tried to do the dive down the inside, did not make it happen, so we'll have to wait and see how the judges go, this Pro-Am series here, all thanks to Zoo Performance at Winter Motor Raceway, big shout out to all of our sponsors here as part of the High Tech Oils, Drift All-Stars, well, of course, Vango Rapid Repair Centre, Brakes and More, Orange Hire, Power Wow, and of course, We've got the, uh, so many other people to thank. Zoo Performance, High Tech Oils, uh, High Tech Batteries as well. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of people jumping on board and being part of this series. It is a great series. It's building. There's um, people from Raceline, uh, like you said, um, that have been coming along and helping out. Vango does lots of stuff. He works with all of the guys within the field, you know. In fact, he's actually got my R34 at the moment doing that after it unfortunately copped a branch one day. So all the guys out there, they, they really support this series. They think it's going to be a great thing. It is a great thing, um, and things are moving forward nicely. So we've got a replay here, Mitch Bud getting out ahead. Um, in the, in the second run, so you can see Mitch is leaving that gap. Joe, a little bit far off the back there again, the transition back there, a little bit of a wheel drop, um, jump over the kerb. So we told them we weren't allowed to jump the wheels unless they were, and a, and a dirt drop at the end, they weren't allowed to jump the kerbs unless they were closed out. Now, Mitch Bud in the front, he did a really good lead. He left lots of room like he was asked to do. So overall, um, it's for me... Personally, I'm going to go uh, with Mitch on that one, but we'll see what the other judges are going to go with. Uh, getting a nod from over there, just waiting for the sheets to update. They're a little bit behind, but yeah, so looks like Mitch Bud going through on that one. A great lead from him and a good solid chase. Great to see Bo Gagliardi coming back into the series after starting off in South Australia at the bend at round number two, and he's going to be taking on Sam Mudge in that the poor little SR20 that, that just wants to keep giving. I mean, he has to work that engine hard. It's a dual performance engine as well, and he pushes really hard in that car. You just tell it's only two litres there, though, so the torque is not always down. You hear him really having to clutch kick it sometimes. we we'll have to wait and see because Bo Gagliardi's got the big V8 on board, though. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about drifting, isn't it? You know, you can have tight battles, and if you watch this, I'm sure you're going to these guys are great drivers. You're going to get a good battle out of these guys with two completely different platforms, two different engines. Uh, it's always great fun to watch. Here we go, Sam Mudge leaves a nice little bit of room. Transitions nice as well. He's up close to that curb, though, as they transition back. Bogag Leone trying to stay on the back corner. Does a nice job and the wheels go off and we'll have to see if that's past the finish line. The perspective there, we saw it last time we changed the camera angle. We'll have to have a look and ex see exactly Bogey Glad. It's really easy. We spoke to Dale Campaign, the number one qualifier in the Pro Series earlier. And what we found out was he actually got sucked away by the driver in front. And if you can't see, you might just go a little bit wiser. Check out the tri replay on screen at the moment. See, good entry from both the boys there. Lots of room left by Sam and, and Bo just taking that opportunity again, diving in there into the pocket. That's what we asked him to do. Is a really, really good solid chase run here. Good wide open there again. And from there on, that's pretty much... They've pushed a bit hard. We've told the boys they can back off a little bit more there. But, I mean, heat of the battle, the guys just send it. Uh, I think it's just all a little bit of fun when you get to that part. It's a nice flowing section when we go through the S's on the front side here of Winton Motor Raceway. So a little bit more flowing, a little bit more speed coming out of those final corners. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is a flowing circuit. It, it just lends itself to that nice transition, transition, transition. That drifting is just, it's well known for, you know. It's a, that sort of seesaw effect. Um, the guys do need to do still demonstrate snappy transitions. They need to still show us good angles. So all of those things are important, and they're working on it. Obviously, these guys, the Pro-Am guys, there's, their restrictions with tyres are they've got a narrower tyre, they've got a less grippy tyre, so they're not running the semi-slicks like the big guys are. Um, and you can have a look here. You can see the boys just tucking in right up in the pocket and the transition to see if there's a couple of wheels off. Uh, hard That's going to gonna be very, very hard to tell, isn't it? With all that dust kicking up, Possibly could be one, possibly could be two. We'll have to wait and find out. The judges will have to deliberate on that one. Bogagliardi is going to lead this time out. The big V8 power. Can he pull away from Sam Marge? Will the SR20 just stick to that back quarter? Of course, you can see they've got a driver around the witch's house. Gives the, the chase driver a chance here just to try and get that speed up. Look at the pace he's got now. And just here roll the power on. Some 
some nice angle there as he carries it through the second corner. Transitions nice, out nice and wide. This time there's no doubting there are tyres on the bitumen there and you can see the hand out the window there from Sam Mudge. He's happy about that one. Took a nice advantage at the back half of the run there to try and close that proximity down. Just sacrifice a little bit of angle there to try and get on the back pillar as we go to the Tri-Ace replay. Yeah, I'm going to have a bit of a close look at this. This was an interesting run here. Um, the guy's diving in. Good amount of proximity to the corner from Sam in front. Bo taking this one. This is the lead run, so we need to see the other one as well. But it would be good to see them back to back. The wheel off there, it looks... Well, it could be two wheels, actually. That could be a two-wheeler, which is going to give a bit of a penalty there. So it'll be interesting to see what the, the other replay looks for, but that's definitely a big deduction, unfortunately, for Bo. Bo Gagliardi did a really impressive lead run that time, and it's all going to come down to that chase run now. Who did the better of the chase runs? Because those wheels off at the end, was it before the finish line? Was it after the finish line? Was it one wheel? Was it two wheel? It all comes into account when the judges are looking at it. Remember, they're looking at speed, angle, and the line that they've chosen, remembering that the lead driver needs to leave a little bit of room on those corners, about one metre off, so that the chase driver can really get the nose. As we go now to the tri-ace replay, this time it's Bo Gagliardi Artie leading this one. It's the second run. Check that out. Scrap the pitch a handbrake there to get the angle on the car. Trims it in Mudge there. He just starts to pull away. But here you see the dive down from Mudge. Gets it in nice and shallow there as Gagliardi goes out wide. Just staying on the gas the whole way. Enjoying as many runs as they can get here at the High Tech Oils Drift All-Star Series. Looks like we may have a decision coming through from the judges on that one. We'll let you know very shortly. Of course, Mitch Budd taking the win in our first battle up against Joe Egan. So knocking out the number one qualifier, Mitch Budd. Yeah, that was a great run from him. He really did a good, good, uh, good solid chase, which I think was what sold it for him. But the key thing is, as I was saying before, we always judge lead versus lead, and his lead was almost impeccable. Wasn't much between the two leads. So um, we, uh, we, we keep an eye now as we go over to the next battle, which is Matty Murphy leading Benny... Boyle. Yeah, Matt Murphy out of the ACT, going to be the lead run here in the Zoo Performance Pro-Am, and he throws it down, he's been to both rounds as well, he's up there in the points at the moment, the Team Blast car, I'm sure he'll have all the boys there, oh no, the little K7 in the background, Benny Boyle spins the car out, trying to maintain the pace there of Matt Murphy in that R33. Yeah, Matt Murphy coming along so, so well and so quickly. I mean, it was probably, I mean, you consider there was COVID involved in this, but only maybe two years ago he started off. Um, one of the competitors here, Flash, who unfortunately has broken his car this weekend, was going to enter both uh, Pro and Pro Am, but unfortunately he's out of both of those categories. Put together a little come and try thing where he had people like myself and other judges, other senior people coming along to, to mentor these guys. Matty was in my team as well. Um, we mentored him along, he did really well. He was still very nervous and now he's just come leaps and bounds. Um, filmed, formed a team, got that 33 dialed in really well. So he's coming along really, really well and you can see the speed. It won't be long before he heads up to the Pro Series. Yeah, Ben Boyle in the background there, just overshot the corner, couldn't hold the angle. And that's just the difference sometimes when you've got a really fast car out and you've got someone who's probably just getting a little bit faster than they're comfortable with or the car's set up to take. Yeah, absolutely. When you're trying to chase someone who's quicker, you're just you're pushing, pushing, pushing to try and get there. And that's when, you know, you try and make those transitions. You make them too quickly and it spins you around. And, and that's what we saw there from Benny Boyle. He'll be disappointed. They've worked hard. They've had some dramas with the car. Um, so they have. They've worked hard to get it back together and get it out there, make qualifying. Um, and put a car on the grid. So they'll collect still some championship points, which is important for him. Um, he's sitting reasonably well, I think, in well, the... Uh... It's not over yet. It is not over yet because Matt Murphy could make a mistake here. And it's what we sometimes see when you've got a slower car in front of you. You've got to adjust your speed and still be able to maintain that proximity without making contact. What? And that's harder to, harder to do than you think. Yeah, absolutely. And look, you'd think I should know about that. We've got two, two sides of the battle, shouldn't you? But um, it's always hard to come back from a 10-0. He'll give it a go, and like you say, Matty Murphy now has got to show that he can not just demonstrate quickly. Um, driving, he can demonstrate some nice, slow drifting as well. Ben Boyle now in the lead this time. Matt Murphy will be in the chase there from Team Blast, and look at Ben Boyle. Throws it down. Huge camera, little KE70. The tyres look so skinny on that car. He's looking a lot more comfortable in the lead run. Leaving a little bit of room there. Murphy doesn't decide to come and shallow down and close that proximity. He's still... Not too far behind, but he just needed to bank one then and not make a mistake. So no need to push it too hard and rub panels when you don't need to. But definitely did not let Ben Boyle get away in that run. 
It's great to be here in the Pro-Am Series, all thanks to Zoo Performers. Of course, if you haven't checked them out, go to their website, of course, because uh, they've got everything there. As we check out the Tri-Ace replay now, and this time it's Benny Boyle. We just had him take the lead run and look at Matt Murphy. You think he could have all in there, Dan? You reckon he's just playing it safe? Look, Matt, Matt knows that he's the faster car. He would have either looked back in his mirror or he may already have comms in the car. The guys all have spotters they bring along. So he may have been told you're a much faster car. Give a bit of a gap at the start. You can see he did close it up, demonstrated more speed towards the end, but probably could have committed a little bit more. Um, for me, I did actually give that one slightly towards Benny Boyle, but it's not going to make a difference, unfortunately. He needed a big result. Um, he, he still won that half of the battle, but not the whole lot. Yeah, Ben Boyle there, unfortunately, spinning out, so that'll probably see him go out of this one in the top 16. Uh, in our pr previous battle, Bo Gagliardi has got the win over Sam Mudge, who is up there in second position in the championship. So that's another big name already out. Bo Gagliardi's uh, down here at the moment in our rankings, though, because he's only done one round, and we can see him, well, actually, we've seen him a couple of rounds, 123.7th position. Let's head down to Damien now. Well, we've got a little bit of Pro-Am uh, about to get back underway. Looks like we've got some issues down there for Damien Cook. He's uh, trying to catch up with the boys, I suppose. Have a bit of banter down there. It's great to see Cookie. Damien Tanty now is going to be in the lead here over Steve Cerrone. Steve Cerrone there with the... Well, he's got the 180 there. They've been working hard. They put the dry sump, they put the dry sump in this in the last 12 months as well. And we've seen him in a lot of drift events around the place. Damien Tanty. Got to bring out the S13. Leads away this time. Let's have a look at this first corner. How's the initiation? Gets in there. Steve's going to try and push that nose into the 180. Just to grab a little bit of handbrake there. Looks like he just wants a little bit more pace. The final corner as they come flying around nice and wide out of the outer clipping zone. Oh, what a run. That was brilliant. Steve Cerrone was really, really giving it to him then. That was great to see. And that's what a good lead can do. It opens it up, leaves that opportunity. Steve's obviously ten. Um, Feeling quite confident there behind Damien and was able to, you know, push into him and, and get those pockets that we were asking him to do. So a great run from both drivers. Well done. It's going to be up to Steve to put down a good lead that's chaseable now for Damien. I'll have to wait, Steve Sarayan. How will he go in the lead run? Will he be as fast as he looked then? He looked like he was just keeping that proximity nice and close but not pushing the car to its limits yet. We'll find out. Damien Tanty. Well, now it's his time. He has to chase. He's going to have to get right up on the door, apply that pressure to Steve Cerrone, and maybe he can force a mistake. Let's head down to Damien Cook now. We've got Bo Gagliardi and Sam here. It was a great battle into the Pro-Ams. The mighty LS took out the SR. Well done, Bo. How do you feel? Yeah, pretty good. Um, I think calling it SR was a bit of an insult to injury, but it was good to, it was good to get one over Sam. You know, he nudged me out in the last round at Taylor and Ben, so it was good to get it back. Phenomenal driver, quick car, and... Yeah, like, just love to thank everyone, you know, sponsors the team, we got it running good, and you know what, just, that was it, man, you can't, can't ask much more, and Sam's top competitor, so it'll be great to run him back again, and yeah, see if you can get the trifecta. Well done. We know it's not SR, it's yeah, a little it's two litre RV. Little well RV done, 20, mate. Nah, yeah, congratulations. Look, thanks very much, look, had it going, but just wasn't quite there, boat, unreal driver, the big LS, it's just... Too much for me sometimes, I think. Maybe one all now, though, so I'll get you back in the next round. No worries. <laughs> all right, turn on. Thanks, guys. Yeah, great to see him down there. A lot of bands going on. That last battle we had between Matt Murphy and Ben Boyle. Of course, Matt Murphy getting the win after Ben Boyle spun out. So no surprise to see the Team Blast car going through. I'm sure the boys from Team Blast will be very happy about that one. All right, we switched him around now here in the Zoo Performance Pro-Am. And Steve Cerrone is going to lead this one out in the DC Tuning 180. Damien Tanti is going to have to chase down. We'll see how this one goes. It looked like Steve Cerrone might have had the faster car. We're going to, about to find out here. The front S is a Wyndham Motor Raceway. Throws the car in nicely too, carries a whole heap of speed there. Damien Tant is going to need to maybe sacrifice a little bit of angle. Goes over the curve there to try and maintain that proximity. They come out of the final corner, the outer clipping point. They're on the gas. It's full throttle. And Steve Cerrone with some big speed there. Remembering they are not on those semi-slicks. They are on a road-based tyre. It's basically a road-based tyre. Limited sizing there, so very different when we come to the pro cars. To be that quick is amazing. Steve Cerrone doing a fantastic job here in pro As We check out the tri replay. Yeah, look, if you watch them coming down here, it was definitely Steve that had more grip as he took off out of there. Threw it in well, and now you, if you watch him versus Damien's lead runs, the lead runs are very, very similar, but Damien picking a wheel up over the kerb there, unable to be able to match um, Steve Cerrone in the chase position. So for me, we'll see what the other boys have got to say, but for me, that's a Steve Cerrone victory.
Yeah, doing a fantastic job in the lead run, and we're waiting for the live results to come through so we can let you know out here, of course, on our live stream. All thanks to High Tech Oils, the High Tech Oils Drift All Stars here for round number three at Winton Motor Raceway. Fantastic to be back, and if you want to find out exactly what it's all about, well, one, you can either watch the supercars when they come here, or two, you can get on iRacing now and download this, another Australian track. So we like to come here because, well, the drifting's always exciting when we come to Winton. I don't know what it's, a, what it's about with, the, uh, with, with Winton and the way that it breeds excitement down here, but it is a great track. It's a real racist track, and it's good fun to get down here and watch. You can see, again, a big gap from right from the start. Steve Sroan on top of it. Damien wheel over the curb there, and then flicking it back. Easy one, really, to Steve Sroan, and the results are through. The boys have agreed with me, which is always a nice thing, um, and Steve Sroan gets the win. It's great to know that someone agrees with you, isn't it, Dan? It's always good to know someone agrees with you. <laughs> All right, we move on to our next pairing in the Z Performance Pro-Am. The lead is going to be Kieran Ratcliffe taking on Timothy Bradbury. Who's going to get the win in this one? We'll have to wait and find out. Of course, Bradbury in that Ford Falcon Ute, which is always fun when you don't have a lot of weight in the rear end. Watch him go through the first corner. Nice transition there for Ratcliffe. Bulls are carrying a lot of speed. You can really hear the RPM as he pushes it over the finish line. Unfortunately there, Timothy Bradbury having a bit of a struggle trying to keep up there in that Ford Falcon Ute. It's always going to be hard with that different style of car. And we have seen a few of those Utes converted into drift cars previously, but a lot of work goes into the suspension set of them. As we check out the Tri-Ace replay, we'll try and dissect this one a bit more. Yeah, so just a stronger start really from Kieran there. He got away really, really well. Um, threw it in pretty hard and sent himself a little bit deep but Tim just didn't have the speed wasn't expecting it maybe he's a new driver it's great to see the boys down here Tim and also his son uh, Jackson that come down so you've got a father and son combination which is pretty exciting um, to have the boys part of it but yeah pretty strong lead there from Kieran who again fairly new to the series but that's what the Pro-Am series is about is bringing those new drivers through and he's just going strength to strength each round and I, again another one I expect to see fairly shortly well-presented car up in the Pro Series. Yeah, the, the bug will bite, the modifications will happen, and we'll see some changes happen to that car for sure. And uh, But look, it's not all over yet. He's just getting those tyres warmed up down the back here as they get these cars around because now it's a chance to lead in this battle. It's going to be, obviously, Timothy Bradbury. He's going to have to really throw it down. Like you say, Kieran Ratcliffe got away last time. He just drove away so fast. Is he going to be able to maintain that pace and keep that proximity? Because it is all about proximity as a chase car. The lead car needs to get the line right. They need to lay down a perfect line that the chase car can then get that proximity on. And if the chase car doesn't do that, advantage to the lead car. If the chase car does do that, the judges have got a fair bit of work to do. Well, look, and Tim's already had a battle. He had to battle earlier on to get through to this position here. So he's had a run. He's had a little play in the track in a battle situation. Um, it will be interesting, though, Kieran. Again, being a new driver, it's going to be easy, able to slow his drift down. We saw he was a faster driver, was able to pull away um, and whether or not he can slow that down and just sit in that pocket or whether he's going to do similar to what Matt Murphy did and give a bit of a gap and then walk the thing forward as it goes through the, through the battle. Here we go, let's have a look. Well we're about to find out this time Tim Bradbury is going to be leading out in that Falcon Ute. See him going through the gears, setting himself up for the initiation into the first corner. Very hard to stop the Ute turning around on himself but he gets it done through the first second corner now transition now to the final corner but the proximity behind Kieran Ratcliffe right on the back of the Ford Falcon U it's, it's um look the proximity difference there I think between the chase runs is what we're going to see in the judging there we'll have to wait and find out for the official result but uh, Kieran Ratcliffe no issue there maintaining that proximity throughout the entire drift of that one can't wait to see the try star tyres replay yeah absolutely he really did uh, throw it in he engaged in the battle he didn't take any risk of being deemed with a uh, a, a non-engaged chase run and he's you can see he's left about a car length which is a safe number you know you control it pretty well from there flicks it back tucks it in sees the pocket open he just keeps doing exactly what we asked him to do in driver's briefing this morning coming back around closing up that gap a little bit more i mean tim's done a great job that was a really strong lead run as well so there's nothing to take away from that lead run versus lead run is pretty good what that one came down to was tim just wasn't able to keep the proximity and have that battle behind so for me i've given that across to kieran it looks like the other judges have the results are in reasonably quickly with that one so kieran's going to go through 
get into the top eight of the Zoo Performance Pro-Am. Kieran Ratcliffe, a nice win there over Tim Bradbury. So it's, we will see him back, though, because there's a little bit of talent coming through there. You can see that one now as the next two cars are lined up. This time in the lead run is going to be Mark Paternan taking on Jordan Sanderson. Yeah, Mark McKinnon's been around. He comes in and out. It's, he's a great little driver from New South Wales. Um, works really hard through the week just trying to, to pay for drifting. A lot of these guys are privateers. They they spend their own hard-earned cash to come and do it. And the way they turn these cars out is really, really fantastic, mate. It always looks amazing. Yeah, the Commodore Ute. Going to have to uh, chase them down. Just having a look at the lead run. Nice transition there. Leaves a nice gap. An opportunity there for the chase car to try and poke the nose in. Just struggling to maintain that speed. And the big smoke shows that come out of the final corner. A couple of bits of V8 power there just trying to smoke those tyres up. And remember, they've got to go back and do another run. So you don't want to use up all your tyre in one run. And we do see that with some of the big horsepower cars. I like to burn those tyres up pretty quick as we go to the tri replay. Yeah, you can see... Um the Jordan was just being a little bit cautious going into that first entry there and again within transitions a little bit slow and labory so Mark's done a better job in my opinion so far but of course there is a story of two tails here you just flip it around and it could be completely different but so far for me I'm going a little bit of an advantage to Mark McTinn in there um, with his nice run that was on the points it was on the line it was where it needed to be he left the opportunities open and Jordan probably didn't quite grab them as well as we would have expected but Let's see what it looks like when we flip them around. Yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, we don't see a lot of the Commodore Utes there get bought into the drift series anymore. We've seen quite a few over their time come through as drift Utes, and you start to modify the rear Enzo's and change the suspension quite, quite a bit to actually get them to do what we want to do. It's very hard to explain where, although we are spinning the tyres and drifting, we are actually looking for grip at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you see things where people will take their drift car, they make a couple of small adjustments to the setup, and they go and run a, a, a circuit lap time that's easily comparable with anyone else that would have a car of that sort of level. So the cars are set up for grip. We do set them up to grip and drive, even though it looks like we're slipping them. Um, we changed some of the settings because, obviously, instead of steering into a corner, you're steering around the corner with opposite lock. So what, the way the car behaves, we need to adjust some setups for that, but we're looking and chasing grip, and it's about grip and speed. All right, this time Jordan Sanderson is going to get the lead there in the Commodore U. Mark is going to have to chase him down in that S13. Jordan Sanderson, how fast is he going to try and take this one? Gets the initiation in. A little bit of a stando there. Looking a lot more comfortable in this run. Just setting his own pace, running his own line. And Mark McTernan has just dropped off the back there a little bit there. Looking a little bit uncomfortable with how this has gone. And Wow, the judges are going to have something to think about in this one because it's going to be the tail there of the better of the chase runs. And I can see the the eager looks from all the judges there to have a look at the tri-ace replay here as it comes up on our screen, all thanks to Zoo Performance, the Pro-Am category. This is a replay here of the battle. Yeah, I think Mark might have thought he had a little bit more advantage than maybe he does. Um, He's had a go in there, but you can see running right off the back of the Ute, that's a big no-no. We needed him to be in a pocket, not hanging off the back, and that's affected the second half of his run. So, I don't know, it's a really, uh, it's a reasonably sized error from Mark there. I'm going to have to have a little bit of a more think about it. I can hear the Ute. You're going to be thinking about that one for just a second. In the meantime, we might head down to Damien. How are we going, guys? We've got Steve Cerrone here and Storm, his spotter. We just come through the win. How are we feeling? Yeah, good. The car's feeling good and running great all weekend. It's been a good weekend so far. Brilliant. Storm's keeping you online. Keeping yeah, you yeah, he is. He's making sure I'm going all the right clipping zones and stuff like that, and he's changing the tyres for me. Fantastic. All right, keep sending it, mate. No worries. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to see Steve down here. Bringing the family, that's what I really like about when we come to the high-tech all Drift All-Star Series, is everyone's got their kids. Uh, they've got their partners here. It's just a really nice vibe when you come down here. Yeah, look, I remember back when, it's almost ancient history now, when I was driving, but my, my kids were, they both came along while I was competing and drifting, and it, it's not an easy thing to do, particularly for the wives, you know, it is Mother's Day, and we want to shout out to all the mothers out there today, saying, um, for, particularly for those that are here uh, with their kids, or let their kids come and compete, um, you know, it's great to see such a family environment there. Right, here we go, Nathan Ranson in the lead of this one. It's going to be Nathan Ranson and Matt Walters now trying to chase up and he just loses him there in the final part in the final corner. Nathan Ranson drives away with that one. 
We'll have to yeah. wait and check out the replay on this one. We are in, of course, the Zoo Performance Pro-Am category. It's a fantastic product from Zoo Performance. You get your fuel rails, all your hoses, clamps. Uh, mate, you get this bit of it. You get a widget's dip there, your G-Force gearbox. Mate, great supporters here of the High Tech Balls Drift Series as well. And we uh, can't thank Zoo Performance for being on board for this season, which is the 2021-22 season, really. We've extended it out. Round number three here at Winton Motor Raceway. Yeah, we're chasing the boys at Zoo. You know, they wanted to do something that that promoted drifting and brought the level up and I was just thinking to myself then while you were you were going through running through those bits and pieces mate that we are only in the top 16 of, of Pro-Am. I remember back a year or two ago and uh, from a judge's perspective it wasn't really until you kind of got to the top eight or maybe even the top four in Pro-Am where you had to start watching really closely and picking more closely on some of the errors that these guys were making because it was usually pretty pretty clear cut in the top 16 on who would win and who wouldn't but I mean, just looking at my scores, you know, they've got wins that are by one or two points. So it's it's a lot closer than it used to be. And that's through um, Zoo getting behind it and chasing the boys, getting behind the series and pumping it up. These guys are presenting good cars. They're presenting good driving. Um, and it's great to watch, mate. I'm enjoying it. Our previous battle between Mark Maternan and Jordan Sanderson there. Jordan Sanderson gets the win there in the Commodore. So we said it was all going to come down to that chase run. Yeah, we did, mate. And, and I think that error that Mark made was just a little bit too big, that error that he made in the in the in the chase position you know he needed to he needed to make sure he got that car into the pockets he missed it um whereas even though jordan was sitting a little bit further back he was definitely better in the pocket here we go this time matt walters is going to lead us out over nathan ranson and walters there tries to drive away in the drift angry look and that's what happens when you're probably not happy with your chase run oh no ranson off the track and into the signage there it looks like doesn't look like too much damage at all. How do we go there for Matty Walters? Looks like he's getting around the final corner nice and safe. And it's not just two wheels off that we normally look for when we come down to the judge to give a zero. That's all four. Yeah, well, that's all four. It's, uh, it's definitely a clean-cut decision. I was feel like I might have just jinxed him then, saying we usually get a clean-cut decision in the top 16, and it hasn't been there. And then all, all of a sudden we spin it around. And, yeah, anyway, look... Um, a shame for Nathan. He, he had a small advantage in my book over Matty in the in the initial run, but Matty's just gone. See, and this is what I was saying before. Being in that chase position and trying to catch up makes it difficult. You get lost in the smoke, which is what's happened here. He's popped out. He's gone, oh, I'm not where I need to be. Tried to pull it up. Wasn't able to do it. And unfortunately, that beautiful looking R32 has taken a little bit of a love tap. You know what? Look at that. He might have got all the wheel on the, on the barrier. I'm, I'm thinking that because I thought it might have been a sign, but having another look, that is a barrier there. I know they're not um, super full, but yeah, that does a lot of damage. And remembering that Matty Walters took out Jason Hayden, who's actually fifth in our championship at, uh, coming into this round, took him out in the top 24. So, let's take away from Matty Walters, though the lead run probably wasn't the best, he, he drive angry, I'll tell you what, he came out and he drifted angry, all right? Oh, absolutely. That second run was very angry for Matty. And, and look, I was chatting to Matty, he had, had an unfortunate qualifying, had a, a really unusual one, which was a front tyre D-bead. Uh, didn't have the best initial one, tried to put a little bit of a safe run down, wasn't ideal, didn't qualify very high with it. In his second run, he's pushing a bit higher, his front tyre actually debeated, beated which spat him off the track and he ended up with a zero. Brian um, Cookshack, though, our championship leader here in the Z Performance Pro-Am, laying it down in the BMW here and he's trying to drive away from Jackson Bradbury. Bradbury's got the air cleaners out the bottom, you can tell that's got eight cylinders on board, but the little 1.5 J, no drama in the BMW, that is super gripped up. Yeah, well, that was absolutely flying then. Um, you know, Brian Cruikshank, he's one of the masters of setup in the field, he really knows how to do it. It's going to be super exciting when he does get into the pro category and gets cracking along there. A little bit wide, a little bit off that clip. Um, hasn't really affected the chase because the car's just too far back. He still had an opportunity to dive in there and see where he wanted to be. And unfortunately for Jackson, just falling off the back of the, the, uh, the Crookshank mobile there, and, and that's going to hurt him a little bit. He'll have to see what he can do in the return battle. I'll tell you what, they, he works at a place where they try and make chassis grip up with three and 4,000, 5,000 horsepower drag cars. Now he's got a lot less horsepower to try and grip up. He's probably got about, you know, four or five hundred horsepower on board, and he's trying to get that chassis to grip up. Now, the BMW chassis overseas, we see it used so many times, but he's making this one work really hard. Yeah, look, we've seen a bit of it in Australia. I guess um, being a European car and, and the overseas European series, they're, they're a lot like our Sylvias and our Commodores are over here, you know. I mean, even Sylvias to a point are as common, but the BMW, particularly that E46 chassis, is just it's so easily available because it's being used so much over there. All the companies with the spare parts, you know, Wisefab and all that, they've built things for them so that you pretty much buy one. And because there's so many of them, I was watching Formula Drift 
um, this morning before we came to the racetrack. Uh, big shout out to the guys in New Zealand. Um, Darren Kelly obviously over there from the D1NZ series. He's over there having a crack in that awesome Aston Martin. But they've got four or five of them in their category, right? There's a pro category with E46 BMWs, and it's because it's just so easy to bolt bits into them. I reckon he's got a couple of little secrets there, being a chassis builder. I reckon they've probably tweaked a couple of little things in that car. It's, it's normally got one wheel off the ground, so I'll have to wait and see. Jackson Bradbury, though, is going to have his opportunity with the big horsepower S13. Can he try and drive away in this one? Brian Crookshank leading our championship, coming into round number three here at Winton Motor Raceway. Will he go away with the championship lead? We'll have to find out. He's he only qualified sixth today, which is a little bit lower than we're used to seeing Brian qualify, so we can see that the level of competition is even better here for this round. Let's check this one out. Jackson Bradbury in the lead. Initiation, nice huge angle on this one. Brian Crookshank, how close does he want to get? Lost in the smoke there, but he comes out the other side. Oh, no. Up, wheels over the front there for Bradbury. He's just thrown it in, and it's gripped up and gone forward over the ripple strip of Brian Crookshank there. Make sure he doesn't make contact and goes around the outside in this one for the Super Performance Pro-Am. And that looks like our final battle in our top 16 as well. How will our championship leader go? It looks like this one could be a pretty easy one to tell. Yeah, look, trying really hard, Saxon. I guess this is his first competition. He's obviously got a lot of power in the thing, making heaps of smoke. Um, good little test for Brian. Running a little bit shallow, but also by the same token, Saxon a little bit too high. A really aggressive transition. He was trying to push for those extra points, but unfortunately just snagging a front right wheel on the ripple strip, which pulled him around. He lost his drift, and that's going to be game over for him. Here we go. All well, thanks to our sponsors here at the High Tech Oils. Drift All Stars, of course, race line there. Vango uh, Rapid Repair Centre there. Brakes and more Orange Hire, Power Wow, and Haulage. Uh, of course, we've got plenty going on today, but right now we're going to catch up with Damo. Yeah, we're down here with Matty Walters uh, in the Drift Angry 33. Looking a little bit scary, I was watching, and you had all eight cylinders rocking and the push rods foaming, yeah. but he was running away. What happened? You got there in the lead? I got there in the end. Like, I, I don't know what happened behind me, but whatever he did made a mistake and I managed to get through to the end. I was doing my best and yeah. No worries, keep the ball rolling, mate. Good job. Thank okay, you. thanks, guys. Yeah, there he is, and uh, yeah, Drift Angry, like I said, it wasn't the best chase run from him in that first battle that he had, but when he came out in the lead run, mate, that car shone, really, in his driving style. Yeah, as I was saying uh, before we had that battle start, we really had to... But you see, Matty, he had a bad qualifying, which put him down the field, which is possibly not good for people like Nathan Ransom, because you get a bloke that can really battle well being out of position, and it means that he's going to come through. It's going to be hard battles for him the whole way through, but for anyone that comes up against him that might be thinking it's a little bit more cruisy before he gets there, well, he's got news for them. He's a very, very good battle driver, so... Expect to see him keep pushing forward. Especially when he can put up that smoke screen that you just saw there on the Tri-Ace replay. Uh, puts that up very hard for the driver behind. Now, we've got the pro categories coming out next, and we've just gone over that top 16 here, Dan Mackey, and looks like we are going to have a battle now. It's going to be called the top 24, but really we've got one battle in there. It's going to decide who is going to be our top 16, and we're going to go straight into him. And look, he is the mad Irishman. Mickey Moo is lining up in that 180 with the big V8 of the Juar V8 power plant. Yeah, well, interesting this one too, because he's going up against Mark McTiernan. Now, for viewers at home, you'll be going, hang on, wasn't Mark McTiernan just running in the Pro-Am category? So what the High Tech Series, the High Tech Drift Oil Star Series does is that um, they, High Tech Oil sponsor a couple of entries to go up into the Pro Series. So we watch the guys on Saturday, we see who's doing a good job, who might be ready for Pro, and we give them a free entry up into the higher series um, so they can have a crack against the, the big boys. But we're going to duck down to Damo and see what's going in the pits. Here we go. Brody, are we ready? Push rods? Rockers? <laughs> nah. All the engines are all good, real sweet. Obviously the car's looking pretty beat up after the diff broke yesterday and we put it in the fence. Uh, we've got a fresh tail shaft in, um, we squared up the best we can. Unfortunately, in practice this morning, I um, mean, James Abbott had a couple of runs and um, had contact, so we busted another rim, um, put another couple of um, wheel line in the back corner. But look, we're good to go. We'll be confident. I'll be sending it. Um, here's what it is from here. Look forward to the show, mate. Cheers. Good luck. Just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, 27 and single. <laughs> as he's got his profile. So, uh, yeah, just line up, line up. Here we go. It's going to be Mickey Moo now, the mad Irishman. 
Uh, he's gone from 2J Power to the big V8 Juar performers. Talked him into it. He had one drive, I think, of Damien Cook's actual R33 with a V8 in it, and we were sold. 2J was out, V8 was in. Yeah, I mean, we often talk about the big V8s being boat anchors, but I mean, Aaron Duar and the guys down there have really done an awesome job at Duar's Motorsport to, uh, or perform performance, really, to, to get rid of that niche and, and that thought because it's he builds them amazing engines. He does that. Nothing more exciting than listening to that thing come singing past you at 10,000 RPM out of a V8. So it's, um, yeah, I can understand why Mickey Moo decided to switch it around and make the 2JZ, which we all know really is a boat anchor, and throw that in the bin. Oh, that's that's hard words from an RV man. That's all that is. <laughs> hard words from an RV man. They make a lot of power. I don't think it matters whether you've got an RV or a 2J. They're both going to make a lot of power. And then, uh, look, we'll just stir that up and throw the Barra boys in there. They're, they're, they're making 2,000 horsepower on stock stock uh, blocks, mate. I'll just uh, put that out there. Okay, well, let's get on with this one, though. Of course, it is the High Tech Oils Pro Series now. And our final battle to finalise our top 16, though, just outside is Mickey Moo, who qualified 17th. Mark Matinan, who qualified 16th. Who is going to go through into the top 16 and battle it out? We're going straight into that after this one. But this one needs to decide who that person is going to be. And Mickey Moo is right out wide. He's out in the channel somewhere. Yeah, well, an interesting one. Mark McTinnon really got away quickly there. And, and Mickey Moo maybe caught just napping a little bit on the start line. Of course, those, the problem with that, where you've got big smoky tyres like this, is you get lost very, very easy. Let's see what happened there. They look like they got away all right. Yeah, the triest replay there. A lot of Bill Wilson there for Mickey Moo. That is one of the, I suppose, downsides of having so much power under the right foot. Transition there, a lot of angle there for Mickey, and he's just washing that speed off. But Mark Maternan just driving away. That car looks super gripped up, especially when you start to put the semis on him. A much quicker car. He looks so much more comfortable driving at speed. Yeah, he certainly did, but you can see too, he's, he, he didn't really enjoy as much as he could of the, the extra grip because a change from no grip to big grip, and you could see, particularly in the last corner, he was quite shallow and well away from the, the zone. Now, in the pro category, we expect the guys to get there and do a better job of that, so we are a little bit more harsh on them when they come to that. So it's going to come down still lead versus lead. His lead wasn't too bad, and Mickey really wasn't engaging in the chase because of the wheel spin. He got dropped back. Um, but he did do a pretty good job by staying on line, Mickey Moose. So it's going to be up to Mark Rattin and to see how he goes. He's got to deal with all the smoke and all that fun and noise. See how he goes. Yeah, of course, Mickey Moo. He's going to want to be in this top 16. He's going to be going all the way. They're the mad Irish men. At the moment, though, we're going to catch up with Cookie in the pits. No, this isn't a flashback. He is back. Agus is back. He's real. Who are we up against? Uh, we got Gus, Angus Kidd, in the uh, nitrous powered 2JZ, and I, uh, I've jumped shit, I'm not feeling well, uh, it's okay, I'm driving an RV, you heard it, I'm not saying it again, we'll leave it at that. We will leave it at that. Guys, seven years of Facebook smashing every driver in the series, can he do it? We'll see in a minute. Oh, great to have him back, isn't it? Aggie is back, and it's, uh, yeah, it's been like 2013, I think, the last time he drove competitively. Look, Aggie's is a great driver, he really is, and, you know, fair enough that he has a bit of a go on when he gets a keyboard and starts worrying up in front of us, but, um, look, we'll be great to see how he goes. Anyway, for now, let's have a look at this one. Mickey Moon, look at him throwing it down, big speed there, in the Cono, 180 there, oh no, switchback, big transition, and... He knows it's all over, unfortunately for Mark Martina, and he manages to go around the outside and doesn't look like they've made contact, and it's now it's just a burnout show there from Mickey Moo. Yeah, I'm going to need to see the replay now, because it almost looked like Mark didn't start the battle, which would mean that would be a zero score for him because he wasn't drifting, and then once Mickey comes around and then spins, the lead car needing to complete the whole run, Potentially makes it a 0-0 and then brings it back to the first battle. So you can see Mark hasn't initiated here. Something not quite right. Um, he flicks it there just as Mickey decides to spin it around in front of him. Would have been pretty exciting and pretty freaky in the driver's seat. I'm quite sure of that. But, uh, yeah, OK. I've seen what I need to see. I'll make some notes and put my score and see what the other boys think. Remnants of Days of Thunder there where the smoke is just in front of you and you've got to go, go high, go high. And that Mark Maternity there goes around the outside. Luckily, Mickey Moo has twisted the car around there. Got it all the way around. A quick stab of the throttle, about 8,500 RPM and uh, one tire, a couple of tyres with no tread left on them at all. As we go into the Tri-Ace replay here, we are going to check out something. Check out 
And we might catch up with Damo very quickly. Well, we've got Jabbit with us. He's got plenty of snap, crackle and pop going this weekend. Has he got what it takes? Nice, easy first battle up with just current champion leader Brody Mark. Hey, we seem to uh, draw him each time, but I don't mind that at all. Uh, he's an awesome driver and a good guy. I actually went out for some battle practice, last battle practice of the day, and I ended up uh, running into him on the entry. Bent my car a bit. He's, he's luckily all right. I uh, apologize. He's like, no, it's fine. It's fine. And he actually had his team help Will on my car so he can get out here now. So, top bloke. And uh, let's go out there and uh, probably just put it into him again. Yeah, I love it. Let's go. Watch his face. <laughs> oh, I love it. Jabs is a big character when he comes down here. And, of course, up out of the high-tech blaze unit. And he's partner in crime here. Scott Shembury now is going to be chasing down Benny Mir from Queensland. A couple of V8s, but one's got a couple of hair dryers on it. Yeah, it's always a good battle watching these two. They drive really hard. You can see Benny throwing it in there and Shambri right up on his door, taking those opportunities as they come around through transitioning. Benny again coming out wide, filling that zone really, really well. It's a good battle, but Shambri is right on his door. Yes, look at this battle. I cannot wait to see the tries replays. You see that Benny Mir takes off, and Scott Shembry, although he's been taking out a couple of things there with the car, he's been looking for some issues. Looks like it is on song at the moment. The High Tech Oil 350Z there. Benny Mir in the 311 Motorsport lays down a nice lead run there and gives that room that the judges were wanting to see. And Scott Shembry just puts the nose of the 350Z in there. Those turbos only just a boost. You can see how much it blazes the tyres. And uh, that's why they are called the High Tech Blaze Unit. The Master Chef himself, Scott Shembury, yeah, getting great. that done. Wonderful to see the boys going there. These guys are uh, lining up. They want another go, but there has been decided. Mark McTinnan going through in the top 24. So we're pushing straight on into our top 16. So Mark McTinnan filling out the rest of that spot. Uh, Mickey Moo, unfortunately, is going to end up on the trailer. Uh, just hasn't been having a lot of luck with it for Mickey Moo. And maybe Damien can get down there a little bit later and just catch up with him and see how he's going. Um, with that car and and the issues he's having the poor bloke he's one of the real characters of the sport you know he's he's a bubbly irishman and then again i suppose most most irishmen are bubbly but loves the sport loves playing part of the series loves everything about it and unfortunately he's just not having the luck right at the moment um so mark mctin is going to go through and take on the number one qualified dale campaign a little bit later on for me very close battle that last one as the boys are coming around and lining back up um on the start line, uh, great chase, Shembury taking all the opportunities, Benny Mir leaving them op open there, so it's going to be up to Shembury to make sure he's leaving Ben the same opportunities to make sure that he can seal that spot or take that spot off Ben. Two very competent drivers, and of course they've both got a lot of battle runs under their belt, we'll have to wait and see, is Benny Mir going to have the pace, or can Scott Shembury let the boost really do its work there with those couple of turbos hanging off the LS? We'll have to wait and find out. Here we go. He's got Shemri now in the lead run. Benny Mir not letting him get away either. 311 Motorsport car trying to push right up. Shemri there gets a transition done. Mir throws the nose down in there in that gap. Stays with him too. The transition again. The final corner. Shemri's on it. Getting the bake on. But Benny Mir just stays on the back quarter of that car. The 350 had nowhere to go. There's a couple of magnets there trying to be attracted to each other. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. You can see, though, Benny's making his proximity just a little bit different to Scott. If you watch Scott's chase run from the first one, if we do get another replay, you'll see Scott has a lot more angle than Ben does in the chase position. So a very, very similar lead from Scott to what Ben did. They both did a great job in the lead. That's what they were asked. Zones were filled, and they're right there at the end. But Benny just used a little less angle to make that proximity. So for me, that's a little bit of advance, uh, sorry, not an advance, a little bit of advantage to Scott, but we'll have to see what the other boys are thinking about. I know they're, they're hard into delimitation. Let's get down to the pits and see what Damien's got for us. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we've got Danny Probert down here. Yes, we are standing in front of an XD Falcon with a barrow in it. Yeah, that's it. The question is, does muscle always beat rice? Not always, but we're going to try and, uh, you know, flip the table today on it. We've got a little bit of uh, practice that we've been doing the territory back home and, yeah, we're much more comfortable in the car and we, we know we're sort of working on our chase and we're sort of where we need to be. So, yeah, excited for today. Glenn is a fantastic competitor. He throws down a smooth line, really easy to chase. So, yeah, we're here to put on a show. It's great to be back. We've had a lot of downtime with the COVID. And here we are now, so yeah, life's back to normal. That's Good. it, and it is, it is normal again for us as well when Danny is back with his team. It's, uh, it's amazing, they come all the way down from Darwin, um, and it really is an incredible effort. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing the, uh, the car go up against Glenn in the, in the Toyota 86. Back to you boys. Cheers guys.
It's going to be a tough one against Glen Omerod because they got to cast it up and they got a, they got a guy in the background who helps out a little bit. Pretty, you know, very similar car there, Mr. Bo Yates. Yeah, look, um, I guess Bo took him under the wing when he was younger, and um, you know, Bo now retired off to do be a family man, which is great. Uh, you never know; one day we might see him back around the sport in some way, form. He's he's been doing it for years and years. So, uh, but Glenno got this thing really dialed in, and be good to see. That's a little bit later, though. Scott Shembury did get the win against Benny Mir. He's gone through. This one's going to be exciting. Let's see what uh, the boys can do. Oh, it's going to be Angus Kidd. Gus now is going to be leading us out in the Supra. And he's done a little bit of front-end damage he wasn't happy about. The Twilight Strands, a big, big throw in there. And look, he has to straighten the tyres. Aggie goes off. Oh, sucks him off onto the dirt. Angus Kidd with a huge entry there. He overshot the corner and Aggie just followed him in. Well, I don't want to be someone to start a bit of Facebook riot, but um, maybe Aggie's stuff's just gone a little bit further along than since it was back in 2013. I reckon he was sitting there in the background when we watched the replay and he's going, there's no way he's going to keep this one. What a throw. Look at him straighten the tyres here, Angus Kidd. He has to straighten. There's no more opposite lock. That is to try and pull the car up. The Trialways Transport Supra. I mean, it's got over 900 horsepower, that car, and he used every bit of it to try and balk him, I think, on the line. It just took off. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe it was a little bit of a case of Aggies wasn't used to having all that RB power under the right foot and just sent himself straight off the side. But either way, um, a small error from, uh, from Gus in the lead. And Aggie's got sucked into it. It's been a while since he's been out in the, in the battle situation, the battle environment. So we've got to give him a bit of bit of uh, leeway and not bash him too much while he's out there in the car and we've got the microphone. Look, he's, he's not between runs checking rockers, so that's a good that's a good sign. You know that he's might, he might come with this an RB lover. You just never know. We'll have to wait and see. I think he might be looking for a 2J Supra. I reckon if he can, because he can pull that off. What uh, we just saw from Angus Kidd there, but that was a big one. Although Angus Kidd probably overshot the, the first corner there. We'll have to wait and see how they go as they turn around. We're going to head down to Damo again. The chef is back. I watched that run. Benny turned it on. Yeah. Like, he, he really made you work for it. How'd you feel? Yeah, good. Look, we're just trying to fight through the day. Obviously, the car's still got the misfire. Chasing's really hard because the more I'm on and off the throttle, the worse it gets. But, yeah, Benny just put a killer lead on us, trying to get as close as I can, and then just try to do um, my best lead. I am just going to be out there and sending it all day. So we'll just try and do what we do, get through as much as we can, and hopefully um, we can sneak our way through. Yeah, sounds good. Shembury, fire up! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> don't have to tell him twice don't have to tell him twice I mean uh, has he got the smoker here this weekend that is the question has he brought the barbecue down look I didn't get to see the barbecue um, disappointing isn't it yeah I was I was <laughs> It kind of ruined my weekend, I'll be honest. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to throw Shembury too heavily under the bus there. But he's one of the most aggressive chase, chase, uh, chase drivers that we've seen. So um, the triace replay, though, again of this one of Angus Kidd, and how did he pull that up? There's no surprise there as Aggie's there just trying to hold on to that one. He's followed him into the corner thinking, mate, if, I'm, if he's going that fast, I'm going to have to try and go. Like you say, he might have thought he wasn't going to pull up there. And at that point, I don't know how Angus Kidd grips up and drives the car forward at all. Look, Angus has got that car really set up for really well. It used to be, obviously, as we know, the orange car, the Game On Supra. It's now been changed across and to the white car. And he, he's been working for so long to get that car sorted out. Um, and get it dialed in. So it's, it's yeah, he's got it right in the zone there and he can do things like it's more forgiving for him. So, yeah. So we see the boys down here from Winton doing a good job cleaning everything up. Uh, they're getting it all sorted out and ready as grippy as they can. While the boys are doing that, we're going to get back down to Damien and see what's in the pits. Thanks, guys. We're down with the Kangang captain, Jason Ferrin, driving the Calamine Lucian R31 Keep It Reet Wagon. Made some dramas. The bike's out. You're nearly ready to run. The boys have had the car up on the wheels, the clutch out. Where we at? So, massive shout out to the boys. They smashed it out. Uh, major dramas with the um, clutch and the clutch slave. We've had to find someone local in town to machine it down, and we, we got it all done. We slapped it back in there. I'll probably say we've got some test laps in there. The car's probably about 70%. Um, so, I'm going to have to drive at 130 to make up for it. Sounds like a good plan to me, 130. <laughs> So basically, you built this car to do professional drifting. That's the main reason you built it. You wanted it to, you know, step it up with all the big boys. How you're finding the high tech series? Obviously, as an owner and promoter yourself, there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes. How you finding the series? How you finding the drivers and competitors? And do you have it to take it all the way to the top? Definitely got what it takes. The cars, 
I'm really happy with the car. Actually, stoked, stoked with it. It's a dream build, I guess. And the series is amazing. Really enjoying it, stepping up with these guys. Um, just, yeah, it's great to see the passion and, you know, people putting the effort to put these events on. It's absolutely amazing to see. So it's great. Yeah. So the clutch is back in. Is it in to get going or are we full send? Like I said, it's about 70% in. Yeah. So she'll do the job. Send it. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. I don't think you have to tell him twice, mate. He's, uh, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see how he goes against Dale campaign later if they decide to face off. Yeah, well, they're on top, oh, separate sides of the uh, of the tree. So if that does happen, then it will be in the final, and that'll be a good one if he makes it that far. And Jason, you know, from from the Keep It Reek crew, he's, he does a lot of events down here in Victoria and, and keeping drift off the street. Um, so it's an important part of the community to be part of. And he's doing really well as well, sitting currently third in the championship. So he can definitely drive. And, and a podium at our last round over in Taylor Bend as well. He got third there, so he's he knows how to put it up there. He likes to throw it in really fast in those first corners as well. We're going to head back down to Damo very quickly. Thanks, Matt. I uh, got Mickey Moo here, mate. Not a good weekend. Like it's been a struggle. Um, we will turn the interpre interpreters on for this and the subtitles, but like, are we still having fun? Like it really is getting like uh, really hard and. We, we want you to succeed. You've got the determination, you've got the drive, you've completely transformed the car to go to the LS. Um, where do we need to go? Yeah, I don't know how, I don't know what happened there. I pressed the clutch in to, to weight shift and she just came right around and I gave her the power. I don't know, because I haven't spun all weekend. Really enjoying the, the LS set up. And um, yeah, like on this morning, I, I thought it was actually a um, big improvement towards the last couple of events in that yeah. car. And um, I thought I had that nailed. I don't know whether I was going too fast or what happened. I'll have a look at it back on the live stream and we'll have to try and improve something. Yeah, so definitely even watching earlier earlier today before the battles, the car, it probably like it looked more settled and more balanced in your driving than it has been for a long time. It's been a tough year for you. We all know that. You keep the determination going and it's going to turn around. Yeah, it has to. Hopefully. <laughs> we had a long time for it now to turn around, but yeah, look, we've... Queensland next. I like Queensland, and then we're home on our own track in Sydney. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to them two rounds. We'll um, hopefully yeah, we, we'll have a sort of by then. Yeah, sounds good. Hope everyone understood that. <laughs> oh, look, the Irishman. The other good thing about Mickey Moo is now is he can party a little bit earlier. Well, we do know that the Irishmen like to party. I don't know if you've ever been to the Border Rock Hotel and had a couple of beers with him. One of his great sponsors um, that helps get Mickey Moo around. Um, yeah, but it's so many. Uh, good times that you have with Mickey Moo. Obviously, the more beers he has, it's harder to harder, harder to understand him. But um, yeah, quite a challenge. Here we go for his first run, his lead run. Yeah, a bit of a tri ace replay as we check out the second run. This is his lead run there, where he came in with that phenomenal speed. They went a little bit wide, and that's what he was talking about there, where he, he came in, put the clutch in to try and transition it, and it just came around. And it's very uncharacteristic, like you described before, for him to be doing that. So maybe a bit of a change in the car. There maybe a bit too much speed carried into that corner. Yeah, well, the interesting thing is, too, I was just noticing, too, that when the boys were practicing this morning, it was, it was bright sunlight, so the track was warmer, there's a bit more grip in there, um, they would have had a slightly different setup in it, they do try and chase the track as it changes and cools off, but maybe haven't quite got it right there in the Mickey Moo camp, and, and that's meant that when he has clutched it and gone for it, there hasn't been the grip there that he's expecting, when he put the throttle down, it's just come around on him. Hard to say when you're not in the car with him, um, or driving it, but, look, he's a great competitor, and he goes really, really hard at it. Uh, we're going to have a look at it from a different angle now just to see how that all went down. Um, pushing hard, got away really well, managed to hook it up and get into there quite well. Came around, had a good strong advantage with Mark McTiernan, and not even initiating behind him. Clutches it there and it just flicks. Uh, I guess trying to be a little bit too snappy. Maybe he thought he had a disadvantage, which he did have a little disadvantage and needed to be really accurate and, and collect those extra points. But unfortunately, this time round it has cost him and, uh, and Mickey Moo... One of the greatest competitors, or well, one of the great competitors, it's always good fun, takes it on the chest, chin. Um, I really do, from a personal point of view, hope to see him making some good gains forward soon. Well, like you said, we go up to Queensland for our next round in the second weekend of July. So we head up to Queensland there. We go to the paperclip. 
It's going to be uh, fun up there. And, of course, our final round, we're back in Sydney, the home track for a lot of the drivers in the series. However, we do love how the Victorians like to come up. The South Aussies come over and uh, the Queenslanders travel all the way down. So it's great to see we can get so many competitors from all over the east coast of Australia. And we're hoping now the borders are open, we might be able to start visiting those little friends we've got over in Island Wire over there. Uh, we'll have to wait and find out as the series unfolds next season. But we'll head back down to Damo right now. Dale campaign, we're ready to go. We're sitting here, we've got a little bit of a clean up going on. Nerves aren't jittering too much, we're ready to go. No, all good. Oh, they went years ago, luckily. Uh, but no, yeah, we're pumped, ready to get into it and uh, get the battles going. So yeah, can't wait to see uh, how we go on our top 16. Yeah, it sounds good. Now, I know you've got the car all rewrapped for the start of this year. Is this like a new sort of sign? The cheapest one we've done, that's for sure. The one. Good luck, buddy. Oh, problems for Angus Kidd now as he has gone off the track there. We didn't see what happened, but the RB gives a nice little pop there up on the limiter there. Aggie there. Andreas Skevos gets through that run, and after last time where he went all four wheels off. Now we've got both cars all four wheels off, and Angus Kidd is leaving, so I think he might have a mechanical issue there, and that's one hopefully that we will get Damien to follow up with in the pits, because he won't want to be pulling out of this one, Angus Kidd there, in the Triways Transport Super, as we check out the Triace replay here. We didn't see it before, we'll watch this one. Skevis there, he's in tight on the first corner, but look at the front wheels locked up there from Angus Kidd. Yeah, it looked like that thing just cut out on him, and I don't know what the situation was there, whether it did just cut out, the engine might have stalled. Um, a lot of these guys are running electric steering in it too, so when the engine cuts out, often it can throw a glitch and the steering will cut out as well. So, yeah, an interesting one. Angus seems to have got it refired, and it's moved back to the pit area under its own steam. Um, obviously, with the, the off from from um, Scarface earlier on and now we've got the off from Angus it's going to be a 10-0 and then a reverse 0-10 so we'll have to see what the situation is there but uh, Aggie's getting a little bit of a reprieve and he will get an OMT I think, I'll be pretty surprised if the boys have seen anything different to me um, I've certainly called that one an OMT because there was no contact and no real reason why it should have changed so I'm pretty sure that will go for another time We'll have to wait and see. There's already a little bit of damage on that car. As Damien's going to catch up with him right now. Angus, what happened? We can see a fair bit of damage on the front. You've come into the pits. Where are we at? Well, there's a little bit of an issue. I'm not too sure exactly what it is, but uh, that time I put the throttle down and just nothing happened. Um, so the boys are going to have a quick look and pull some logs and see what's going on. But in the lead, it was fine. Coming off the line, it just felt a little bit doughy. And as soon as I put the foot down to initiate, there was just nothing there. So... Hopefully it's something little and it's not a sort of a hidden gremlin that we're going to be facing all weekend. So where we are, Agus obviously went out off in his first run. Yeah. Then you've gone off. Yeah. So we're calling five minutes. Uh, no, we're just going for a rerun. So yeah, rerun. Uh, quickly we're going to get a turnaround time. Hopefully it's not driving the boys to pull some logs and have a look. Um, but I think, look, it's probably going to be okay. Um, we're just going to have a look and make sure that everything's okay. We did have an impact earlier today. Cooler pipe came loose, so we'll just double check that that's all good and hopefully the system works all right. Yeah. Hopefully it's something just simple like that. Uh, last thing you want to be is like an electrical gremlin or, or a misfire or something that you just can't find in this short period of time. Yeah, look, um, hopefully it's nothing serious for him. He can get back out and turn it back around. It'll be good to see those guys have a good, proper battle, actually. Uh, as we get ready to send it again, we've got Matt Harvey leading Jamie Goodfrey. Matt Harvey second in the championship and the Tasmanian throws it down the Kumo S13. Look at the speed he carries in here. One of our Pro-Am drivers stepping up in the high-tech all pro category trying to maintain that speed. And he was talking about the new 730 Kumos that he's got on board and he has just stepped it up a notch. Yeah, look, that was a pretty good battle. And even for Jamie, you know, he's entered the Pro-Am category for the first time, got a wild card into the Pro category, had a go, and then all of a sudden comes up against the number two in the championship, number two qualifier this weekend. And it'd be a pretty daunting thing for the young fellow to see how he goes, and he's done a fairly good job there. Oh, I just love how Matt Harvey throws at him with really, so really solid angle into the corner there, but still, it just slingshots out with a whole heap of speed. He is going to be a fierce competitor today, and with Brody May having some issues with the car this weekend, will we see the Tasmanian swap roles? Well, who knows? I mean, the Tasmanians are really strong at the moment, coming uh, across, the, across the, the, the gap there to join the mainland. Um, but I've just been tapped on the shoulder too by James Martle, who reminds me that Jamie Godfrey, it's only his fourth ever time drifting. So 
Um, really? I'm not sure if it's a fourth ever time or whether it's a fourth time in competition. No, he's saying fourth ever time. He's, uh, yeah, just a natural, obviously. So, yeah, awesome to see him doing a great job. He's turned out a really, really nice car. I do like the look of that, that Sylvia there who's got the S13 Sylvia. So, two very identical cars um, as far as chassis goes. The setup obviously will be different for each of the drivers and how they like it. But, yeah, great to see uh, him here having a crack and look forward to seeing him do more things in the future. The test is going to be, can Jamie Godfrey just get his line right? That's all he needs to worry about this time. He doesn't need to worry about too much more. Get the line, nice angle, flow through. Now Matt Harvey has to put a chaser on as well because they're co judging by what we saw that time, there's going to be a big difference in speed. Yeah, absolutely. And Matt Harvey, one of the best chasers in the game. So I tell you what, Jamie, you're about to get doored. <laughs> well, we'll see the Kimo's tyres, S13. Can he stay on the outside thinking, S13? Here we go. Nice transition there, and Matt Harvey there just mimics him all the way, making it look easy for us from the commentary box. And look at this as they come across the finish line here. They go through the front S's here at Moton, uh, Winter Motor Raceway. The tri -Ace replay will show it again, and you said it. He is one of the best chasers in the competition here. Matt Harvey just sticking that Kumo's tyres S13 right up in the gap. But there's nothing wrong from Jamie Godfrey. Nothing at all. Probably a little bit shallow through that second corner there, not giving Matt Harvey the opportunity to put the nose right in. But when you've got that pressure of Matt Harvey behind you, you know, that is a fantastic lead run. Yeah, look, Matt Harvey, he's just all class at the moment. You can see him demonstrating his extra speed by actually running a little bit wide, giving himself room for a transition, then ducking straight back into the pocket afterwards. Yeah, great run from him. For me, it's Harvey. See what the other guys have got for us. While they're doing that and while they're deliberating, we're going to duck down to Damo. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, we're just we've got Patrick Barley here, uh, the Kevlar Corvette, ready to rock and roll. By the way, mate, you're wearing your helmet wrong. Uh, how are we feeling? You're up against Jason Ferrin, has had some clutch problems. It sounds like it's still squealing. They say it's okay, it's 70%. Do we take that into consideration, or are you just going to full send and see how it goes? I take every run as it comes. It'll uh, come down to measuring his uh, pace down the, the straightaway. And if he's clicking gears and he's not uh, buzzing the clutch, I mean, we're all in from that point. Yeah, brilliant. The car's feeling good? Yeah, yeah, a few adjustments that we've changed since our last outing and feeling a lot smoother, so we'll see if we can make it happen. Sounds good. Go for it, mate. Thanks. Well, there we go. Patrick Bully, an up-and-coming talent there. OK, our number one qualifier from South Australia on his second round in the championship. He didn't come to round number one. Dale Campaign is taking on Mark Maternan, who uh, took out Mickey Moo before. We saw that in the first battle there in the top 24. Dale Campaign laying it down the GH haulage. Here we go, the S13. A whole heap of damage where he hit a barrier early, but it has not affected him. The confidence is still there. Mark doing a nice job, but he goes off in the background trying to stay with him. Trying to keep that speed. Yeah, there's a big difference between the speed of the pro guys and the pro AM guys. And Mark McTiernan is doing a really good job here. He had a little bobble going into the start line. You've seen it under the initiation point there. You just can't seem to get the car to initiate, unfortunately. That's allowed Dale to get away. Left a heaps of room there for him to duck into. Mark's had another go. Um, Re-initiated there, but then on something's gone wrong here as he's transitioned in the background. Dale just gasses it up and disappears. Mark McTinnan, no grip, nothing. Locks up all four, slides on the grass. Looks like he's pulled it up just before he's made the barrier, which is a good thing. Uh, but yeah, that's um, that's a pretty big advantage now to Dale. Oh, look, it's got to be one of those things when you go and go, oh, it's Dale campaign. We know how well known he is over in South Australia, how much stuff he wins over that. He does a little bit of travel as well, so he's used to this. Uh, coming over to Victoria, he loves the layout as well. We talk, You spoke to him down there earlier at the start of the program there and uh, loving the layout here at the moment. The GH haulage S13 just doing what it needs to do. And, I mean, this is the other thing about having a car that you've been driving for so long. It becomes an extension of your fingers, you know. They, the things that you can do with a car once you've been driving it that long, it, it just it baffles a lot of people and quite often sometimes your opposition when they're chasing you. Um, I don't think that was Marky Mark's problem. He, he Mark McTinnan, was, he was there trying to get initiated. I think he's battling some problems in that car, but, I mean, he's still prepared to send it. He's still prepared to make the show. Um, he's a great bloke, great competitor, and it's good to see him out there having a little bit of taste of the pro guys as well. Oh, I can hear some noise going by, and that sounds like a 400-odd cubes of uh, V8 goodness from a late-model 
dirt car, Patrick Barley. <laughs> you do like those 434 those dirt cars, cars yeah. A bit, don't you? Yeah, he's uh, well. Look, if they're used to going around. They used to go around in circles for long periods of time. It means they're going to be good out there on a drift track, making plenty of power. But let's get back onto this one. We're going to switch them around now, though. Mark McTennan is going to be in the lead run, and Dale Campaign is going to have to tame that car down. But he can do it. He was number two last time, round two, at the Bend, South Australia. The only one that could be was Brody Mayer. See how he goes in this one. Can he make it through into the top eight? Well, he's got an initiation, which is a good start now. Turned on the smoke machine, giving Dale a little bit of something to drive through. Maybe Dale wasn't expecting this. He's fallen off the back a bit. Mark McKinnon saying, I might have gone disappearing off the track, but now I'm going to make you disappear behind me. What a run. Really stepped it up as we check out the tri-ace replay here. Mark McKinnon starts to pull away there. I think Dale might have just thought for a second there, I'll just give him a little bit of space, thinking he was the quicker car there. Probably keeps the nose in a little bit shallow. That's all right. Dale Campaign is a very experienced driver. He still knows what to do, but he goes wide on that second corner there. He loses a little bit of grip. I think that's in the smoke. A little bit of in the smoke, a little bit of over-correcting with the steering lock there. You can see him using all of that wise fab goodness to keep himself from spinning. Uh, but that created a gap to Mark McTinnan. So, yeah, good look, run. Look, a big advantage there, though, for Dale Campaign, where Mark McTinnan has been off the track all four wheels. So that is a huge advantage. And expect maybe Dale might take one. In the meantime, while we find the results, let's head down to Damo. Maddie, she's going really, really good. You were talking about these new tyres this morning at 7.30. It looks hooked up. It's nearly doing monos up the straight. It's great. It's love the tyre. It's like it's it's very consistent tyre, which has been great. Um, been doing six laps and they're not even half done. So and they're grippy tyres, so they're great so far. Like, yeah, that's awesome. And you think really a shout out to Godfrey, like going up against a guy like yourself, first time pro am into wild card. That's a big step. He really did put it on, didn't he? Yeah, we were talking before. He's from SA. He's, um, he's already booked to the Queensland trip, so. Um, the question around next uh, next round. So where, yeah, he, he did awesome. Like he he drove exactly what how he should, and he just did an awesome job. Yeah, legend. Thanks, Matty. Good luck. See you, mate. Yeah, so Matty Harvey uh, winning that battle as we expected would be the case and going through into the top eight. Um, and great to see that Jamie's enjoying it so much and, and decided already to come to Queensland. Well, here we go. Now we're going to have a couple of different cars. Again, Jason Ferran, he's been working on this R31 Skyline. Uh, of course, they've had some clutch slave issues there and they've been off to a local machine shop to try and shorten some things down and had to change some bolts. We'll see how he goes. He's got the barra power on. It's beating the barra, the NT boy, Patrick Barley, the young gun in this C7 Corvette. Throws it down there, the big V8. How's it going against the turbo? Barrow Power. He's put a bit of a straight in there for Patrick Barley. View change of the car, and Jason Ferrin just throwing it down there in the keep it reap. Calamine Purple R31 Wagon. Let's check out this in the High Tech Oils Pro Series. The Tri Ace replay now. They take off. I was expecting Patrick Barley to have a, to keep with him with a lot more speed. Now you see him throwing it down. A lot of handbrake usage there, but Jason Brown leaves in the room. Nice transition as well. Leaves that gap again, but there was that little straight in there from Patrick Barley. Struggling with the setup of the car at the moment by the looks. Yeah, it looks like Pat's still trying to make up a little bit too much of the gap going into the corner rather than using the grip of that car to make it up going through the corner. You know, as, as with any form of motorsport, sport, the corner has three points. It has its entry point, it has its mid or its apex, and then it has its exit. So they need to make sure that they are setting the car up so that they can drive through it and stay with it. Uh, we're going to duck down and see Damo, who I believe has got Gus, and find out what the update on that su super is. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, pretty simple thing. We're out of nitrous. Uh, so basically, he's gone into the first corner and hit the gas, and the silly gas wasn't there. So the boys are on it. They're into it now. Gus is in the car. Uh, he's not going to blow any intake manifolds. We ready to go, mate? Yeah, mate, ready to blow them off. Should be right now. With a bit of nitrous, it'll work. So what was happening, it came into nitrous demand, and uh, obviously there's a fog room there that jets fuel and nitrous, but it was just pumping in fuel, rich in the tune-up massively, and there's nothing in it. Super mistake for that to become empty. Happens to shit, but I mean, part of my language. Uh, hopefully now the car will drive the way that it should, and um, we can go and have a decent battle with Aggies. Yeah, because the car definitely you've made some made some massive change to the car, and it's like it is literally on song. You're finally getting that joy you wanted. Yeah. Who buys the first round tonight for not putting the nitrous bottle in? <laughs> I think it was me, so I'll have to buy the round for the boys. Sounds like a plan. Better get a trophy. There in that application, they use that to spool the turbo up. Big turbo, big boost, has a lot of lag. They use a little bit of nitrous there, it just kick starts that turbo really and gets the boost very early on. 
Yeah, look, the key takeout for me was that Angus is buying the drinks tonight. Yeah, that's the <laughs> only reason I'm here. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, um, it's it's hard. It's battles down there. It's a flat out. People are going as busy as they can be to get things done. So, you know, small errors and things like that, that can be what loses battles. Fortunately for Angus, he had a 10-0 advantage, was able to go down 10-0 and still get an up 1-1 one more time. So we're going to see how um, Aggies, Aggies and Gus go. Aggies and Gus, that sounds like almost some sort of a dish, doesn't it? But yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be an interesting dish. It's going to be served up hot with extra tyres, mate. Here we go. Patrick Bailey's going to leap this one. Let's see if he's a little bit more comfortable at his own pace. And will that clutch hold out there for Jason Perrin and the keep at Reed R31? We'll find out. Here we go. Throws it out. Patrick Bailey will stand on the accelerator. And there's just so much horsepower on tap whenever he wants it. That car is very good. Huge angles. He drives a Corvette through. Jason Perrin, though, keeping that proximity. Use a little bit of a ripple strip. And a lot more proximity in the chase run than we saw from Patrick Bali, and that could be the difference. Yeah, absolutely. If you watch here, when you with the chase of Jason Fern, he just sets himself up so that the car flows better into the corner. He hasn't gone real hard to try and go for the dive there. Setting the car, following it in, taking that opportunity, ducks back in there, switches it round, and actually gains more proximity because of the slingshot out of the other corner and having that mid corner speed. Little bit of a mess up and a bobble there, but it's not, in my opinion, going to be enough to throw him down. And if you watch it, it comes along the lo uh, across the line, that thing's accurately breathing fire at us. Yeah, it's breathing fire. All right, that screamer pipe. He likes to make sure he blows some flames out there. Jason Ferrin and the keeper, Reed R31. We are in the top 16 of the high-tech oils pro category at the moment. We're waiting to find out who's going to be in the top eight. So far, Dale Campaign has got the win over Mark McTernan. Uh, Benny Mir lost to Scott Shemry, so the 350Z, the high-tech oils 350Z, will go through into the top eight. Aaron Juar got a free pass to Flash Smith. That unfortunately, had mechanical failure before. The, he actually even got a chance to be out there. Uh, Matt Harvey has got the win over Jamie Godfrey. And Jason Ferrin has got the win over Patrick Barley and that one, that chase run, really pulling it off for him. So, Jason Ferrin, can he get back on the podium again? We'll have to wait and find out as our next battle. James Abbott, Brody Mayer, our current championship leader, Brody Mayer, now is going to be in the chase run. He's got a whole heap of damage. Again, he hasn't been as lucky as he has in the first two rounds. We'll wait and see how this one unfolds as James Abbott throwing down. Doesn't leave him much room on that second corner. The final corner, though, it's fast. The two days wound up in the S15 Blades Unit High Tech Oils car of James Abbott really starting to pull away from Brody Mayer with that really impressive SR on board. I'm going to watch this again because I think this is almost a perfect lead run from James. He's thrown it down there, left the doors open enough. He's right there in the... Oh, he's just inside the metre. So he's left enough but not quite enough. We've got a little bit of deduction for that. Again here, small deduction, didn't leave the opportunity there. But Brody's in there and not keeping up with his car. James's car is so quick. James absolutely flying this weekend. He's had a few teething problems this season, actually, with the Blaze Unit S15, Nigella, as they like to affectionately call the car. And unfortunately, those little teething issues there, we've just seen a few ups and downs with him, but that looks like they've got it sorted in for round number three, which is by the raceway. And it's fast, he's just got to clean up those finer points there, but Brody May are struggling to stay with him. Yeah, and look, that's another battle that it's a close result for me so far. I'm sure the other boys are going to be the same. And, and Brody, really, he's kind of out of position where he is. He should be definitely further up the tree in far and qualifying go, goes. He, there's no way that he should normally be qualifying down, and I think it was 14th position. Uh, yeah, 14th position. That's not normal for Brody. So it means he comes up against top drivers earlier than he normally would. You get battles like this. This is going to be awesome as we switch it around and let Brody lead. Let's have a look at it. Here we go, what's he going to lay down? The 900 horsepower SR billet engine. The Tasmanian just rebuilt this engine once again. They like to freshen it up. Here they'll transition. Oh, James Abbott doesn't want to give him any room. Jabs gets right up on the back corner here. It's a smoke show. Brody Mayer transitions. Abbott there just on the back again. Throws it down, trying to maintain this final corner as Mayer tries to drive away. What a battle we have here in the top 16 between Brody Mayer and James Abbott. They've done it a number of times already in this championship. It's a tri-ace replay. You can see it here. James Abbott just leaves him enough room to transition as Brody Mayer throws down some huge angle. And Abbott gets right in there, mimics that angle and gets that proximity on the car. Goes a little bit wide here at this point. Brody Mayer sets himself up for a nice run there. And you can see James Abbott drops off for a second, straightens up and catches him over the finish line. Yeah, what a great run from both the drivers there. I gave it to Brody for just a slightly better lead run, which allowed that better chase from Jabs. Um, but we, 
It's very, very close. Um, I'm not going to tell you what my result is yet. The boys are still deliberating. While we're having a look at a couple more primary plays and seeing what it's at, we'll get down to Damo, who's in the pits. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, we're here with Jason Ferrin. We're on, boy. You got through. The clutch is looking good. Let's know. We've done it, Damo. We did it. I can't believe it. So uh, I did what I said, the 130%, and, it, and she paid off. So we've just got to keep that going. Sounds like a solid plan. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Look, he's a happy boy, isn't he? Uh, so much hard work going on from the crew there, and they've been working overnight and, of course, all this morning to try and get that clutch fixed in that car. And I'm just having a look up here to see what we're going to get. Yeah, it's gone for an OMT. Um, very, very close. The boys couldn't split it. So it's gone. Has it gone? Hang on. Waiting for an update. Oh, we've got an OMT on track. I'm not sure what's happened with the other one. We're trying to work it out. No, Brody Marr's gone through. So Brody Marr went through in that last one. My sheet was just a little bit slow to update there. Sorry to all the viewers at home that are watching carefully. I do know what I'm talking about some of the time, which is not very often. <laughs> one more time here, though. Angus Kidd and Andreas Gevis are going to be out there. Remember, both cars went off the track in their first two battles. The Nitrous is refilled, though, for Kidd, and he throws in a little bit more sedately this time in the Triways Transport Supra, and it means that Aggie's got a bit more of a chance to chase as well. Oh, drops a wheel right over to try and get that proximity back, and looks like he's starting to enjoy that RB power. Well, I mean, Aggies is a sort of driver, if you give him one little look, he'll learn a lot, and he certainly has. He's worked out this Angus kid problem. He said, well, if you're going to nitrous me, I'm going to door you. I thought he might have got away with him there, because he starts to pull away with that big horsepower too, Jay, doesn't he? 900 horsepower there. But you can see Skevis just pulls the car right up, uses it so he can just take off a little bit of angle there. He sacrifices that to make sure he gets that proximity. And as a chase car, the most points you can accumulate is for proximity. We are going to turn around though, and now it's going to be Skevis is going to have to go out there and put down that lead run as well. Yeah, look, I don't want to correct you, Matty, and I never do things like that, but just proximity, yes, but almost also emulation, and that's the key thing is using that lead car as a clipping point. So you want to be nice and close to it, and you use it as a clipping point um, and get as close to it as you can, but then if it switches, you want to switch as well. And Aggie's making that small error just as they're coming through the third turn there and, and running the wheels up when the door was open. Um, that will cost him a little bit, but let's see what happens when we turn him around and we send him again. Great to see us here at Winton Motor Raceway for round number three here of the High Tech Oils Drift All Stars. We're underway in our top 16 at the moment in the High Tech Oils Pro category. So top 16 being run. We've almost got down to our last couple of pairings. And this is a rerun from Angus Kidd and Andreas Skevis. We've just seen Angus Kidd lead. Now let's see how we go as Skevis is going to lead us out in this one. Of course, the RB powered... 180, the Sill 80. Oh, he gets this one down nice. Leaves a bit of room there for Kidd. He can put the nose in Kidd. Throws a high angle. Skevis goes really wide that time. Overshoots it. And, oh, I'll tell you what, Angus Kidd had to really stall that up so he didn't overtake him. Well, it's uh, it's yeah. going to be tough for the judge. I can hear the murmuring already. <laughs> oh, I always love ones like this where... The driver's gone wide, he hasn't quite gone off. The other driver may have decided that he was going to go off, bailed out of the drift, which potentially should make it that one, the lead driver was going off and so the chase driver would win. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to have to have a look at a couple of replays here, Matty. You might have to talk amongst yourself. Mate, try ace replays here. You can see it. You see a touch on the foot brake there as he just tries to pull the car in angle there and Skevis there leaves the room open. Kid puts the nose in there of the Triways Transport Supra there and the transition here is what we need to look at. Not a lot of wheel spin on the back there as he tries to pull up for Kid. I know Skevis did go wide there at that point there but Angus Kid after that seems to be having a little bit of drum with the car and I can see some smoke as he goes around the track coming out the exhaust pipe as well of the turbo. So it may be... Uh, bit of both in this one here. We'll have to wait and see, but that's what the judges have to try and make a call on, and remembering that they are watching this from the outside, they are listening to the cars. Obviously, they have a lot of experience behind the wheels, so they have to try and judge how that one came and who's going to be at fault on that one. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I do believe the judges are still deferring on that one, so we might wait and see if we get a result there from Angus Kidd and Andreas Skevis, as they have already done a one more time. Both cars went off the track the first time. What's going to be interesting, though, we've got our next battle lined up, Glenn Omerod and Danny Pro, but and it's probably an up-and-coming uh, Glenn Omerod in the sport there, the Toyota 86, and he's had um, all sorts of uh, help there from Bo Yates in his time. All right, let's have a look at things again. We've got... 
Aggies out in front. They're coming around there nice and, and even to that point. Nothing really the damage. You see a big overthrow from Angus, but also Aggies has thrown it, and he's right out to the edge of that track. So that's really, really hard to unpack. For me, I probably would have liked to see Angus keep into it and try and go again. I don't know whether he does actually have an issue with that. Uh, Aggies did manage to keep the drift and keep going. Yeah, OK. I think I've got a decision. We'll just see what the other boys have got. Well, we've got three judges that have to make a decision. We'll see if they're all the same or whether we get two and we lose one. We'll, we'll let that decision be made right now, ladies and gentlemen. In the meantime, though, Glenn Omerod, he's had a lot of mentorship there from Bo Yates, a multiple-time champion of the high-tech oils drift all-stars, taking on Danny Probert, who's a mature gentleman when it comes into the drifting. been around for many, many years, and he's stuck with the XD Falcon. Of course, it is a very unique XD Falcon and they've been working the off-season to try and get the suspension sorted out on this. Let's see how it goes. The number odds going to be a fierce competitor there, and Danny Probert really needs to get the chase run right, but he goes up in the ripple strip and unsettles the car, drops a little bit of dirt there, maybe. Glenn Omerod, though, drives through in the... in the Kenex Electrical 86. We check out the Tri-Ace replay here. The ACUG Falcon there just stops for a second there. Being nice, being a little bit too gentlemanly like there for Glenn Omerod, which means he can then start to drive away, and Danny Probert has to try and correct what he's doing there and make up that difference the transition there from both cars, but hitting that ripple strip for the XD, unfortunately, unsettles it. Yeah, and a little wheel drop as well, just to rub salt in the wound for Danny. He, he was going really well, and then I'm not sure what happened. He just got a little bit unbalanced on that transition, um, maybe just transitioned a little bit early. Sometimes it can be hard to see behind the smoke. You've almost got to guess when to transition where they do. Um, these 86s, are, are because of the weight distribution, they can transition on a lot more throttle too, so sometimes it can be hard. Um, Danny, as we know, also uh, has um, it's, it's hearing here, difficulties it's too. It's here so. for me where he stops there. He slows the car down there because Glenn Omrod is not alongside him and it unsettles so, him in the run. Yeah, you're probably right. He probably thought Glenn o was going to be a little bit quick getting out. But if you watch here, Glenn transitions and, and Danny transitions almost identically at the same time, which means obviously they should have progressed further along the racetrack before Danny transitioned. And that's what's unsettled him and then pushed him through the ripple strip, which has unsettled all the suspension, sprung it in the wrong way and let him slide and run wide. And, and yeah, for me... Uh, an unfortunate one. Danny's a great guy too, obviously. I, I mean, it's, I like a lot not, of the guys. It's not over guys. Danny Probert, let him unleash the barrier no, here absolutely. because I know in a lead run he's a lot more comfortable. He is a lot more comfortable. So let's just see how fast he can go here. And he takes off here the XD. Danny's bought you a few beers in the time. Yeah, 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 a couple of cuts. Uh, there we go. Have a look at this one. Can he hold on to it? Leaves a little bit of room there. Glenn Omerod behind. The smoke show is put on, but Glenn drives out of it this time. He's right on the back of Danny Probert, maintaining that proximity. It's a great run from Danny in the lead, but Glenn Omerod just keeps that proximity. It doesn't matter how much smoke the ACUG Falcon wants to put out. He just wants to stay in that back quarter. Yeah, Danny doing a great job here in the lead. Obviously uh, getting it all set up. He knew he had to put down a good solid lead and, and hope that, or hope or force Glenno to make an, uh, an error behind him. He hasn't done. Leaving a little bit of room, Glenno smart beyond his ears sometimes. He's only another one of the young guys. Um, and he just followed along half a car length to a car length behind, slowly closed the gap, reeled him in. Uh, a good drive there from both the boys, um, but for me it's going to be Glenno. Try ace replay there. You can see it's just a big smoke show there once both the boys get on the gas. And uh, looks like Danny Probert there is not going to go through into the top eight. Glenn Omerod going to take the win there. The official, the judges' scores have come up and really hurt in that first chase run there from Danny Probert. So the ACUG Falcon will uh, be back to the pits there. And as sure as the boys will be uh, coming out to watch the top eight in the High Tech Oils Pro Series. So just waiting to see. We do have a result also. Angus Kidd and Andreas Skevis. Andreas is going to go through. The RB's been lucky for him. Yeah, Aggies might have to give up on the SRs and get himself an RB. He managed to get a bit of luck there to get another go at it and, ha and learn a lot. Uh, he's a, he is a good driver. Like we said before this, earlier in the show, you know, he is a good driver and he'll make these adjustments and, and crack on through. So we've got our tr top eight, eight, uh, eight set for Pro. Uh, we're about to get going in the top eight for Pro-M. But before we do that, we're going to duck down to Damo, who's in the pits. We're down with Agus. I've heard in the in the earphone where you, you've won or lost. Now he's redlining here. He's got no idea what's going on. Mate, you're through. <laughs> yes! Yes! So Harry obviously stuck some decent tyres on for that run because the first time you're doing this spinny things in the dirt and what what's with that? Yeah, he said he uh, put on a real good set of tyres and uh, it worked. <laughs> We're going through. Good luck, mate. Thanks, mate.
Uh, well, isn't that good? I mean, it's great to see him back. He's having a good time, having good fun. Uh, you can see how long that car's been around there just by some of the stickerage on it. And uh, number 16, I believe there's a bloke that... There's rumours going around, maybe coming back to join us. And I don't know if you've heard of a, game, a guy by the name of Michael Prosnick ever in your travels, but yeah. I believe he owns that car. So I don't know if, if uh, that car's just been sent down for a bit of a shakedown, a bit of a test, but... Who knows? The rumour going around. Jump on your uh, socials and see if he can hit the man up himself yeah. and can get we, an answer out of him. Can we turn into a trumour? That is the question. Well, we could try. We Enough can, pressure, I reckon. No. He definitely, he bends the pressure, that bloke. Yeah, well, Proz always do, bends the pressure. So get on to him. I'm sure he's at home watching. Uh, good day to Proz. Hope you're in the family well, mate. See performance pro-am. Top eight now. You see Bo Gagliardi's going to lead out Mitch Bud in this one. And Gagliardi just turning on the RPM here as he slides the car in Mitch Bud. Loses a little bit of drift in that final corner. No angle through there, so we'll have to wait and see how that one unfolds there for the judges here as we check out a tri-ace replay here. The first run in the top eight of the Zoo Performance Pro-Am. Gagliardi there just pulls away there with a the big speed. Winds on the angle there. Mitch Budd trying to close it up. Comes in shallow like they can do in that instance. Trying to emulate that car in front. Mitch Budd, but Bo Gagliardi drives away. Yeah, Mitch just... I'm not sure. He just seemed to lose a bit of confidence in Bo or something in that last corner. Didn't quite close right up onto him. Um, Bo looked like he was running a bit wide, but we did tell him in driver's briefing that you could run a little bit wider. We preferred wider than narrow because we wanted to try and protect the track edges, so we're allowing him to do that. So what Bo's done is a minor deduction, not a major one. Um, but yeah, good battle. Let's get down to Damo and see what he's got. Yeah, God, look, we're here with Gas. Obviously, we've just seen... Uh Agus absolutely elated. Unfortunately, the up comes with the down. Gus did it again. Yeah, so we're thinking that there's an op there's probably a chance that during an earlier impact, the drive-by-wire throttle body has suffered some sort of damage, as the same sort of thing happened with the same sort of event, going for full wide-open throttle after a bit of a clutch kick, and it felt like it's just stopped. But this one was worse, um, and it just stopped the car. I couldn't move it either, so... A bit of disappointment because the car's been so reliable and so good for so long and we've just got it to where we want it. Um, but obviously some things, they just sort of happen that way and a bit of an impact has damaged something, but we'll come back stronger. We'll be ready for Queensland. Sounds like a plan. Thanks, Gus. Cheers, Ray. Yeah, that'll give me a look, couple of months there, maybe, to just get those panels repaired up and then make that look <laughs> nice and, and crisp again like it was with that new livery that he put on going into World Time Attack. So hopefully the Triways Transport car will be back. Queensland. Yeah, look, he always turns into a show, Gus, whether it's on or off the track. He's a great competitor and a fierce competitor, and it's a shame to see him go out with a mechanical failure, but the show must go on, and here it goes. Mitch Bud now leading this one, Bo Gagliardi getting right up on the back quarter. Mitch Bud there leaves a little bit of room, comes out, but Bo Gagliardi just has the grip there to maintain that proximity throughout the chase run, and a very different chase run to what we saw previously from Mitch Bud. We check out the trios replay. You can hear the rumble there. Just rolls onto the throttle there. Doesn't want to give it too much and excite the wheels and get them spinning too early. Bud throws it in nicely. Not a huge amount of angle. It's Gagliardi just pulls up on the corner, emulates him through this section in turn number two. The final corner, though, they come out. Bud starts to pull away, but Gagliardi just rolls on into that throttle and catches up to him. Yeah, look, another good run there from Mitch um, and also from Bo. Uh, Mitch was a little bit closer to the line as he goes through this first corner. You can see Bo was a little bit wider um, and really had a slight advantage there, but Bo just taking all of these opportunities and closing right up on the door. So always a close one, always a tight one when these guys are out there, and particularly as we get more towards the uh, front end of the, the field. But for me, it's going to be a Bo Gagliani win. Um, I'm getting the thumbs up from the other judges, so I'd say it sounds like Bo is going through and into our top four. We've got the official there, Bo Gagliardi will go through into the top four this time and uh, look, he's, he's had a fantastic run when it comes to the Pro-Am Series, starting obviously at the bend in round number two, so he's coming into the series and doing quite well. As the Team Blast now leads us out, Matt Murphy in the lead over Steve Sarone. This one's going to be a nice, tough little battle here. We've got ACT versus New South Wales. We'll have to wait and see Matt Murphy there, throws it right down the R33, doing a nice job through there. Sarone though... Just keeping that proximity, pushing really hard at the end as Murphy starts to pull away in the RB power. Well, it started really close up at the start of this one. We'll check out the tri replay. Team Blast stands right out there. 
I want a Calypso every time I see that car. I just want to go and get one from the survey. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A good run here. You can see Matty just leaving that little bit of space. Steve jumping in there and taking that opportunity. A little bit tighter from Matty there, and Steve's still there, but now he just drops away a bit at the big RV in the uh, skyline, winds up, and the big RV in the Sylvia, maybe a little bit less weight, a little bit less grip, couldn't quite keep up. Oh, look, I think with that Murphy too, you notice not the huge amounts of tyre smoke, so sometimes it's probably hard. You need to think about is if you don't have as much wheel speed there, you're actually getting more traction. So they can play with that off the uh, accelerator as well to try and get that speed up and drive the car out. Uh, it's great to see Matt Murphy doing so well in Team Blast right now that we're going to catch up with Damo. Yeah, bro Brian, we're ready to go. Obviously, another one of these days, you seem to be stepping it up, keeping through, we're going through the process. Is you ready to rock? Yeah, we've had to work for it a bit. Um, you know, we had the gearbox out last night, up to 11.30, uh, put in a new slave cylinder, but all the boys pulled together and gave me a good hand, and yeah, we're back out here today, and hopefully going to make it to the, the top. So. Keep it sentence what you tend to do. Yeah, Brian Cookshank, one of the uh, top competitors in our Pro-Am series, he's had a bit of a tougher weekend. Normally that car runs faultlessly down there. This weekend, not quite the case. We'll see if it uh, bears any impact on him a little bit later on. Well, hopefully he's got the gremlins on and all the bad luck over and done with. The biggest thing, though, is not a good night's sleep. You come out here, you get a little bit tired as the afternoon goes on. Sarone's going to lead us out in this one now in the 180. Matt Murphy, Team Blast, is going to have to do a nice job. Beacon wants to go through to the top four again. Serene lays it down, but Angle leaves it. Oh, not as much room there for Murphy to try and put the nose in, but here we go, final corner. Murphy closed the gap up there. Oh, well done to both the boys there. Some great leads from the boys. I'm going to have to have another good look at this and just try and unpack it as Steve Serone leads away now with the flip around. Similar sort of gap as they go in there. You can see Steve Serone getting in there, leaving the door. Matt Murphy taking that opportunity, getting up closer to his door. A good transition again. Steve Serone about the same spot as where Matty Murphy was. This is where it's all a bit different for me. Steve Serone not being able to pull away. Matt Murphy staying reasonably close. Still a little bit behind, but reasonably close. So for me, it's going to come down to the chase runs. Uh, the lead runs were very, very similar. Yeah, the tri replay, we'll have a look at this one. I want to have a look at turn number two, actually. I think Sarone may not have quite as much angle there as Murphy. As they come in, you see the DC tuning 180. They come in to the first corner there, and like you say, a bit of gap there left for Matt Murphy to get in. As we turn it around here, they transition over, and Sarone drives off that fairly straight, actually. Yeah, look, good pick up, Matty. You are getting closer and closer at this. You never know. One day, if one of the boys is sick or COVID strikes us down, you might get a gig, grab you, give you a pen I'm, and a clipboard I'm, and I'm, see how you I'm go. I'm very judgy. <laughs> you are very judgy. You are very judgy. But, you know, that's the sport. You enter a sport like this, it is a judge sport. Um, it's, it's what they guys put themselves up to. There's no data like you've got in the Supercar Series or the other series. We judge you, we give you feedback, we show you how it is. But we're about to go here. We've got Kieran Ratcliffe leading Jordan Sanderson, so let's see how they go. All right, in the lead, like you say, Kieran Ratcliffe there is going to throw it down. It's going to be up to the holding youth there. Jordan Sanderson did a nice job in the top 16. Can he make it through to the top four? Oh, Ratcliffe trying to get away. There's probably not as much angle there from Sanderson in the chase run there, but he managed to maintain a bit of proximity, so it's, it's not all lost in the chase run. Watch a tri-ace replay of this one. We are in the Z Performance Pro-Am, of course, in the top eight. Ratcliffe there gets a nice snappy transition as they go into turn number two. Not as much angle there from the Commodore Ute this time, though, of Jordan Sanderson. It's one of those harder vehicles, I suppose, without major modification to get that lock on because you just don't have the steering input there to catch it if it's going to over-rotate. Yeah, absolutely. And Kieran being rather technical with the run here, too. You can see he's got it in. He's left the space. Jordan's kind of followed him as opposed to diving in, which is what we're looking to do. He has a go at diving in here and runs a wheel up on the ripple. That's okay if you're forced down, but because Kieran left the space there for him to get in there, we didn't want them running into the ripple. He's still done a great job of maintaining proximity. You're right, he did sacrifice a little bit less accurate uh, angled through there, but he's, uh, he's definitely given it a good mix. It's not a big advantage in my mind, but it is a little advantage. For now, we're going to duck down to Damo and see what's in the pits. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, we've got uh, Jewa here. Bit of a some the master versus the apprentice. Um, your next battle is with Agus. And he actually, yeah, was pretty involved in in sort of getting you going when you first started. And and uh, now you get to battle him. Yeah. Um, yeah, Aggie showed me a few things back in the day, a few years ago now. Um, yeah, get to battle him now and see how we go. Should be 
fun. He's in Pross's old rocket that I built, so yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. A lot of history in it. Yeah, Question a bit emotional. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tear it up. Yeah. Are you going to put it on him though? Oh yeah, I'm going to rub yeah. it all over it. Right. Turn it up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You've got to, uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a couple of blokes just hanging around down the pub having a yarn on a Sunday Arvo, isn't it? Uh, no, good to see uh, battles like this. And there's, a, there's, there's different stories up and down the pit lane, you know. You get down here, you have a walk around, and you've got to come down to hear all this stuff and get these stories. So well worth making sure if you've got nothing on the uh, second weekend of July, uh, get along to Queensland Raceway, get into the pits, meet the boys, have a good day, uh, and see what's going on. Jordan Sanderson's going to lead us out in the comedy of this time. We're going to Ratcliffe and, and Sanderson. Maybe bring Ratcliffe unstuck. Ratcliffe in the R34 looks like he's a lot stronger. This one maintaining proximity. Bigger little bit easier coming from an R34 platform. Oh, we're hearing a fair bit of breaking down. They're not quite sure if that's just a gear down and on the limiter. Maybe not going as fast probably as he wanted to in his lead run. And we'll have to wait and see how that unfolds because we are in the Zoo Performance Pro-Am top eight at the moment. And this is the Tri-Ace replay at the moment between... Jordan Sanderson and Kieran Ratcliffe. Jordan Sanderson in the lead run this time. Ratcliffe's already had his lead run. Yeah, and you can see uh, Jordan in um, in the big U down the front. Just doesn't seem to have the grip, whether he blew too much tyres off in the back or he's trying to run tyres across two battles. These guys do run on a pretty tight budget. You know, it's it's sort of the first step up from your state category into a national thing, and it does cost a fair bit of money. So if you're looking to back someone from, from the... From the comfort of your own seat at home, jump on board with these guys, give them a bit of backing, get them around the country, but Kieran Ratcliffe being able to drive the big R33 with the R34 front end on it, nice and gently and slowly around there, just picking up the door and wandering around, so he's really showing Kieran that he's got the ability to drive both fast and slow, demonstrating lots of technical ability there, which is definitely going to see him in good stead uh, as he moves on, and I believe into the top four, yep, the other judges did agree with me, which is great, so he's on the top first one on the right-hand side of the tree in the top four, so well done to Kieran. Yeah, Kieran Ratcliffe going through into the top four, will be taking on well, we're going to find out. It's this next battle who's going to decide who is going to take him on when it goes to the top four. Of course, Bo Gagliardi will be taking on Matty Murphy in the top four as well on the other side of the battle tree. That one's going to be fantastic. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty good one, a pretty interesting one. And you know what? This is going to be a good battle too. Brian, super technical, just like flowy, running sort of events, whereas Matty Walters... Bit of a different sort of driver. He's a bit more like a Scott Shembury, aggressive, wants to get door, wants to eat those doors. And I said it earlier, you know, Matty Murphy, don't write him off. He might, uh, not Matty Murphy, sorry. Matty Walters, don't write him off. He's, he's, uh, um, he's, he's moved up and had a bad qualifying. That doesn't mean he can't battle. You can battle your way back. And that's the best thing about this sort of sport is that you've got those opportunities to even have a bad run and still push through. I'd say he drifts angry. That's where he drifts. Brian Cookshank going to be leading this one out. You can see the BMW slides in nicely here. We'll have to wait and see if Walters, what's he going to come back with? Not as much angle there as they go through turn number two. The transition there, a little bit later than Cookshank. But they're side by side. Bit of a straighten up there from the drift angry car there. The end, Matty Walters with Brian Cookshank doing, well, just what he does. A very technical lead run here as we check out the Tri-Ace replay here in the Superformers Pro-Am category top eight. Cookshank there leaves him a little bit of room there, and Matty Walters follows him through the transition. Yeah, these boys spent a lot of time drifting together in New South Wales. You can see Matty a little bit shallow there, just dove in a little bit too much. Have to be careful when the guys leave the door open to make sure that if you are similarly, similarly sped car, that you don't go too hard and too quick. And that little straighten at the end, we have allowed a little bit of a leeway with that because the guys can send themselves off the other side if they get too close. So nothing too major for Matty as far as deductions go in that chase. Pretty good run. Uh, of course, Brian out the front doing the right things. Good lead run, run, leaving leave the door open and leaving that opportunity there for Matty to get in there. So it's going to be important now for Matty to demonstrate that he can do a good lead run and leave that opportunity for Brian, and then we'll find out whether or not Brian can get up there and give a, a little bit of an autograph to the side of that drift angry door. Mate, Matty Walters did it last time. He drifted angry, which is all over the side of the car, and laid down a killer lead run there last time when he came out, when he was battling it out there with Nathan Ranson, and Ranson ended up going off the track as well with the speed they carried. So maybe he will un get Brian Crookshank unstuck. We're remembering Crookshank still leading us in the championship after two rounds, so no surprise actually when we know the pedigree, the pedigree of what we've seen from him so far. And I really cannot wait to see him step it up into the pro category in the coming seasons of the High Tech Oils Drift All Stars. Now though, we're going to turn him around. Crookshank needs to put together a really stout 
chase run on this one to see if he can go into the top four and make another final of the Super Formers Pro-Am. Oh no, some issues there. The car is way back and doesn't look like there's a whole lot of power and they did have the gearbox out last night and Drift Angry Man, Matty Walters is going to drive away at the moment. Look at it. Jack seems to come on later on. I don't know what happened there on the start. Was there an issue? Yeah, maybe there's something with the clutch slave cylinder or something. Mr. Gear, who knows? That was a big one, though, but he definitely got away. Yeah, you can see a little bobble. There's like there's something not quite right with it. Another little bobble there before it gets back on power. So he's Mr. Gear, I think, is what's happened for Brian, which has given him that big gap. Matty Wilder's going too bad, so sad. See you later. And taking off into the distance. Big entry for him, getting initiated early, picking up the clip. Um, Brian doing everything he can to try and catch back up, but Drift Angry... Matty Walters just disappearing into the distance, and that is a pretty strong run from him. Look, you're never going to catch Matty Walters. I think if he's in the lead run there, you make a mistake. He has not faltered on the lead runs here today so far this weekend here at round three of the High Tech Oils Drift All-Stars Zoo Performance Pro-Am here at Winter Motor Raceway. We'll check out one of the triest replays once again. You can see him just pulling away that gear missed, and it's a big mistake there from Brian Crookshank, and it's probably going to cost him a spot in that top four. And when we look at the championship points there, he's pretty lucky. But the good thing is Matt Murphy now in third position is only uh, 38 points behind. It's just going to give him a little bit of answering in the top four. Maybe if he can get on a one or two on the podium there, Matt Murphy might be able to close that gap up and go past Sam Mudge in the championship. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at Kieran Ratcliffe and Matty Walters. They've had a couple of little issues in, in previous rounds. Um, Kieran losing an engine last round, knocking him back. Matty Walters not even making the round. So they're a little way down. I, I know that Brian now, as the results have come through and Matty has gone through, um, Brian's going to be hoping that Kieran can maybe take Matty out uh, or put him back down to try and save a few of those spaces. And again, Bo Gagliani and Matt Murphy, they're up there and they're nipping at the, at the, at the uh, heels of, of Brian. So Pro-Am Championship, very, very exciting, mate. Mate, still two rounds to go. Of course, we go the second week of July up to Brisbane and then, of course, our final round in uh, Sydney Motorsport Park. We go back to the home ground of what is the High Tech Oils Drift All-Stars. So still got a couple of uh, to go. The, the championship's getting very, very interesting right now. Though we're going to head down to Damo. Yeah, thanks, guys. We're just here with Jordan Sanderson, first ever comp in the Zoo Pro-Am Championship, driving the VEU. Pretty cool car. Um, literally, first chance into the top eight. Pretty insane. You were doing a lot of to and fro and yesterday was set up and just getting balanced in the car. Turned it on today. How are you feeling? Yeah, no, nah, heaps better. With you guys helping us with the Zecnova tyres and the semi-slicks, because yesterday I was just on the radial tyres and I was sliding everywhere. Okay, we're actually just running your run on the replay now. Um, just tell us about how you felt and, 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 and basically how the run went down. Oh, my chase, I don't think I was too bad. I probably didn't get it close enough as I could. And then on my run, I struggled. I missed third and then I had to have another go at it. That really killed me. I think that was just nerves. I've been hitting it all weekend and then, you know. But, no, it was good, mate. I came here that if I could get in the top 16, I was going to be stoked. Yeah, and you smashed it. You got top eight. You got settled. Unfortunately, the third gear thing is going to be a continual struggle. Yeah. Uh, might have to hit yeah. Zoo Performance up to get a nice donk box. Yeah, that's it. Uh, but, yeah, like, congratulations, mate. Really, really big effort. It's, it's, you know, it takes a lot of commitment to, to come to the event, let alone a top eight in your first round. So congratulations. Thanks, mate. All right, Thanks, cheers. Thanks. Well, we move on to our High Tech Oils Pro Series now as they are coming out and we, uh, we're not going to disappoint. We're going to bring some big names straight up. Yeah, no, the Pro Series, mate, they're always going to be uh, there and it's pushing all the time. It's one thing we definitely do know. The Pro-Am Series and Zoo Performance bringing plenty of people along to that series. Also stepping up, great to see new guys there um, like Jordan. But we've got the Pro Series now. We've got the number one qualifier, Dale Campaign, going up against Scott Shembury, who, again, is probably a little bit out of his normal spot, um, normally a little bit higher up the tree in qualifying, and we know Scott Shembury, one of the most aggressive chase drivers in the field, but Dale Campaign, he doesn't mind eating a few doors either, mate, so... <laughs> he doesn't mind bending a few either. Well, yeah, <laughs> bit of a challenge, <laughs> the boys have had to work pretty well. He can, believe it or not, that door can open, um, but it, it did used to have a window on it, it broke the window, pretty uh, scary moment for Dale earlier, but like he said, he's been doing this for a while, these things happen... You brush it off, you shake it off, you square the car up and you send it again. Well, Scott Shembury obviously chasing another little niggle in that car as well where he said he's been struggling to try and drive around it. Now, do you think he just he brings his on excuses nowadays or do you think it's, uh, they're going to get that sorted? No, nah, look, you can hear it. When he comes out of that last corner and he, and he really starts to bury it in there, when it loads up and it goes into the high high RPM, then he does have that unfortunate miss, which he's trying to drive around. Uh, Damon's got a quick update before we send this battle. 
So we got we got Matt Harvey down here. We've got the, the Reet Wagon pulling up now with Jason Ferrin. We're ready to go? Yeah, we're ready to go. We're against the, the King of Style himself, so we're, I'm pretty keen. I haven't battled Jason before, so yeah, let, let's do it. Sounds good to me. Yeah, look, Matty Harvey, he doesn't, he doesn't worry. He puts the car wherever he needs to put it. So here we've got the uh, Zoo Performance top four. We're going to have Bo Gagliani versus Matt Murphy. Kieran Ratcliffe taking on Matthew Walters. Those battles will be pretty epic, so uh, don't go away. Stay with us. Um, if you've got someone around, I know it's Mother's Day at home, and once, we, once again, we'd love the mothers there. Hopefully they're on the lounge. Recharge their champagne because they are going to enjoy this run to the family. Finish. Yes, there we go, the High Tech Drift All-Star Series as we head over to our pro category, all thanks to High Tech Oils. And our top eight now is going to be Dale Campaign taking on Scott Shembury. Aaron Jouar, who we didn't see before because his competitor pulled out with some mechanical issues taking on Agus there. That one's going to be a showdown there. Uh, then we're going to see Matt Harvey taking on Jason Ferrin and Brody Mayo taking on Glenn Omerod. Wow, that's pretty loaded. That's going to be some awesome battles once again. Like I said, I'd probably get an esky next to the couch if I were you sitting at home because you do not want to leave your TV for a second. It is all coming thick and fast here at the High Tech Oils Drift All-Star Series live from Winton Motor Raceway. Um, the sun isn't quite shining on us, but the battles definitely are. Let's get ready to send the top eight. Well, can the Master Chef cook something up here against Dale Campaign? We'll have to wait and find out. Of course, Cookie is catching up with all the drivers for us this weekend down in the pit. We're about to get underway with this top eight battle, and Campaign's going to lead this one out. You can see in the GH Hall, he's just 13 there. He's uh, got the big RP power. Until we get this one started, we're going to catch up with Damo very briefly. Yeah, we've got Glenn and Brody here. We're ready to go. Glenn, you're leading first. Out qualified, yeah? How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling pretty good. The car's on point. Yeah, feeling really good. Awesome. Brody, are we right to go? Car's on point. Feeling awesome. <laughs> right on. Let's go. Well, the battle has started here as Dale Campaign runs it in. Shambri there gets so close, and now you can see that issue he's having in the straight, and it's all over for him, and this one is a chase car, and the GH Holy Jess 13 at Dale Campaign. The number one qualifier just lays down a killer lead run. Yeah, that, that is the issue when you have got an issue with your car and you come up against Dale Campaign. He has absolutely no mercy out there. And if you have one little bobble, one little error, he'll put you to the sword. You can see the boys here initiating quite well. Uh, a really good proximity from Scott Shambry in the High Tech Oils 350Z. Right up there, gets on the throttle early chasing him there but there's a little bobble right about now where it looks like the power or something's cut out he can't transition properly Dale Campaign goes thank you very much kicks a clutch kicks a gear and disappears and that is a big big deficit to come back from for Shembury but you know what if anyone can the chef can the chef can he'll be able to uh, concoct some something up there I reckon uh, what I reckon here I reckon for the crew of Dale Campaign they've spent hours trying to get that door to operate so they can get back out there and at this point here it is so close watch this they come out of turn number one I love the slow-mo here they transition Scott Shimmery loses power it's straight how close does he go to just denting the other door? And I reckon the crew had a moment there as I was sitting in the crowd. Well, I mean, I guess that is the thing. Maybe it's just go and buy a whole wreck of shell, right? Then you've got two doors to replace once it finishes getting beaten up this weekend. Uh, but Shemri missed him. Uh, unfortunately, whether he missed a gear or whether he missed, uh, missed a little bit of power on the throttle there, um, a big, big lead there for Dale Campaign, and that is definitely not something you want to give him. But Shemri will throw down, and it's going to be all up to Dale to stick it with him. Yeah, I'm sure Scott won't want, to, uh, won't want to disappoint the Mo fans out there. He's grown a big, big filthy Mo here in the off-season. It's good to have him out there. But he'll want to throw it down here. He's going to be all under power, I'd say, for this one. He won't get that miss. He's only getting it when he throttles on and off. Look at the transition from him as he starts to drive away. Campaign has to work hard to stay with the speed of the high-tech oil, 350Z. And the Blazing, oh, look at that. Gets sideways across the line and pulls it up here Safe. right in front of the crowd. I tell you what, uh, owner and uh, owner and promoter of the series, George Gambino, has just stepped into the uh, commentary box in the judging tower here to have a little bit of a look, and uh, I'm fairly sure he's just about to duck down to his transporter now and get a fresh set of underwear after 
George, George has nearly watched the uh, company car get what, get what? doored into a into a wall there. Well, he, yeah, he got off his he got onto his feet really. I reckon he got he got excited there. Chambry here, no drama once the car's under acceleration. A little grab of the handbrake there as he initiates in the first corner, and then it is all power throughout this run. Look at how much Dale can has to work on this. He goes right up the inside ripple strip as well on turn number two. I mean, after that lead run, he's got a big advantage anyway. But Chambry here putting it on for the crowd here at Winton Motor Race, where you've got to be here to experience how wild it is. Oh, that was awesome. Even up from all the way up here in the commentary box, we could see just how exciting that was. And it was a massive, massive um, pass for Shembury. He threw everything on the line. That spin was after the finish line, so it doesn't count. So it all counts on what's going down here. You can see full throttle transitions. Those things are the hardest things to do where you're just driving it straight through the transition. It's a small dab of the clutch, but you don't even notice it. He's done it again there. Managed to maintain it across the line, lost control afterwards. Dale actually did quite a good job to avoid him there, as did Shemry to avoid the wall. Um, and uh, look, Shemry won that one, but unfortunately, the little error, the little bobble, the, uh, whether it's the misfire that he's been trying to fight all weekend and get around, might have been the gremlin that beat him in the end. Yeah, Dale campaign will go through to our top four once again. His second round in the high-tech oils. Drift All-Stars, and the second time he will be going to find. Look at how close this is up on our screen, the Trias replay. Oh, yeah. just inches away from that solid concrete barrier. He's got a lot of dirt behind it. That wasn't going to shift. And the shake of the head there from George. Is, <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, I think they've already repaired the back of this car after round number two. So it's, it's got a fresh new uh, page up on it. All right, I've been waiting for this one. Aaron Jouar, we didn't see him come out in the top 16 because, well, he didn't have a competitor to go against. And he's going against someone who's really uh, shown him so much in the world of drifting. Absolutely. You know, Aggie's brought, brought Dabs into the, into, the, uh, into the world of drifting and got him started. And maybe that was a good thing, maybe it was a bad thing. It was definitely a good thing for us. And this car is going to sing. If you want to have a listen, now turn up the volume. Oh, the Jouar. LS Powered S14. Sanding those... Oh, sending those Ignovas away. Look at them as they go through. He pretty much power skidded the entire way from the start line all the way down. Dabs just always, always is send everything, put everything on the line. Uh, he's a great character to have in amongst the field, and it's great to have him back. Um, and an awesome driver. You know, he's always 90, 95% every time. Um, right, right up there. Not a lot to go for this boy before he starts winning competitions and who knows, driving like that, might get one today. Well, we'll have to wait and see if Aggie is going to stay with him in that one. He didn't. He kept some nice proximity in that one, though. He didn't let Juar get away and it's just the amount of wheel spin that Juar has. There's so much grip in that car, but with the immense amount of horsepower that it's got, it just spins. With. Look at this on the replay. He's spinning the wheels already here. He doesn't have to transition. It's already up on power. Yeah, 200 metres out from the actual initiation point and he's got tyre smoke coming off. Just awesome to listen to that thing. And I'm fairly sure he might have even dialed it up a little bit because that thing sounded like it was just about to click over the 11,000 RPM limit as it came past us here in the commentary box and across the finish line. A good run from Dabs. Um, Aggie's just falling a little bit back there, getting a little bit lost in some of the smoke. Uh, it's probably changed a fair bit since 2013 when he last ran. The tyres weren't as grippy, there wasn't as much tyre smoke, wasn't as much power. So he's adjusting, but he's adjusting really well and he's adjusting really quickly. He's going to have a lead here now and it's going to be up to Dabs to try and chase him. Mm, there wasn't these 9,000 RPM uh, LSs getting around too. <laughs> yeah, Dabs, no, right. Dabs, you know, like had a lot to do with Prozzi's car as well, so he knows a lot about the mechanics. He'll know exactly how much horsepower that car's carrying there. Aggie's now going to be on the lead running. Can Duar tame the LS? Keep it behind him. He's going to put in a smoke show for the crowd at some point. You're going to hear him get on and off the throttle. It just picks up from any point. Very shallow run there from Agasso. He's got the wheels up over the inside. Ripple strip on the final corner. The yeah. master and the apprentice, really. It is. It is. The master and apprentice. And I don't know whether it's switched around or not, but that is an amazing watch, run to watch. You can see... Uh, Aaron Duar doing a really good job in their chase there just to slow it all down a little bit. He knew that Aggies was going to be a fraction slower than him, but not that slow, really. He's, he's still quite quick. Transitions were good. Line was good from both the drivers. Um, coming down a little bit more to the chase run, to be honest with you, and that was what to expect from the guys at this level. Let the boys decide. We'll wait. we'll wait and see if we get a result out of that one very shortly for you as we keep checking out the tri-ace replays up on our screen. and. Agus throws it in there to Wah, knowing that he doesn't have to be so violent on the throttle there. Just takes it nice and easy, and uh, it's great to see that proximity he keeps maintaining. Though Right now, though, we've got Damo down in the pits. Yeah, thanks, Matty. Scotty, 
What happened, mate? Like, we looked over, you got us on our toes. I guess got George on the thing now. He knows he needs a dry cleaning bill for the race suit, but <laughs> any damage on the car? No, nah, no, nah, all good. Look, unfortunately, my chase around the car misfired. It was on Dale's door. You can see his uh, rear bar on my front bar then, but then it misfired, so it was straightened up. But then in my lead, I'm like, look, I'll just send it. And um, unfortunately, come and transition in that way, lost all power steering with the Astra pump. So we were locked up. And I'm just happy to keep it out of the wall, really. So look. Yeah. We're not, I know the car's there. Once we get this mist sorted, like, it's going to be pretty much unstoppable. We'll be back, mate. Oh, as unstoppable as that filthy mo he's got over his lip. Yeah, well, I mean, it's good to see Shembury out there and, and get cooking tyres again. That's what he likes to do. If we run out of brooms, we can use it to clean up the pad later. That's all we can do with that moustache. All right, here we go. It's going to be Jason Ferrin taking on Matt Harvey. Matt Harvey leading in the Tasmanian. He was number two qualifier. He's number two. Jeremy, look at the angle he throws on. Ferrin's not going to let him go, though. The proximity of this one is a transition. Ferrin just holds off the back a little bit. The power plus fuels Kumo. Powered S13, they smoking them up, and Ferrin's right there as they come out of the smoke. Pop of the flames there, as you can see on the screamer pipe. This is an awesome chase run, and here was me telling everyone at home that Matt Harvey is the king of chases. Well, Jason Ferrin must have heard that, and he said, Mackie, you know nothing? Watch this. <laughs> and this is amazing. Look at this. He throws it in hard and deep and pushes. Both drivers on pretty much a full throttle transition. A little handbrake from Jason just to tuck it in behind there. Brings it back around. He goes in deep, a little bit too deep. You'll see he's going to run just a fraction wide here, right out to the edge of the track. But even still, with the grip of that 31 wags, he's managed to stick it right up there behind him. <laughs> what a run! It is no slouch, is it, the R31? The big barrel power pushing through over 500 kilowatts on board. And Matt Harvey had all the work cut out. And look at the amount of angle, though, he throws on. He's so confident on those new tyres he's got from Kumo. He's really starting to push it more and more. And... Oh, with Brady May being a bit further down, I thought he might have had it this weekend. And Jason Perrin comes out and goes, no, mate, we're here. We're here to have a great time and we're going to take it. And I think there might have been a tyre off there from Ferrin there in that final corner. We'll get down to Damo right now, though, to catch up with Agus. Yeah, we're both. How are you going? You ready? Good, Top mate. four? Yeah. What a day. Yeah, I'm stoked to be here. You know, I was up against Matt. Um, he's, uh, he's a crazy good driver. He's fun, man. There's a bit of a banter between us, between the LS and the RB. Yeah, yeah. We both like to thrash around, so it's going to be good. She'll be a sick battle man door on door, and just going to have a good time. That's it, buddy. Go out and find some push shots. Cheers. See you, mate. <laughs> There we go, our Pro-Am drivers getting ready for their top four, and we are still deciding who's going to be announced for. Speaking of which, Aaron Juwa went over Andrew Skeva, so... Yeah, uh, Dabs versus uh, Dabs versus Dale campaign, that's going to be pretty exciting, definitely, to watch that one. Uh, Matt Harvey, uh, in my books, after watching that, and the little wheel drop from Jason, it's kind of a shame, it detracts a little bit. He didn't take the door opportunities that he needed to, so a slight advantage to Harvey. Let's see what he's got in, in response to uh, to Jason's chase Oh, before. he's going to take it to him. Last time he took the Dale campaign over in South Australia at round number two. What can he do here? The big R31 with a heap of angle wound on the Acostal kit, getting its work done. Matt Harvey, though, like you say, so good at those chase runs. And, oh, look at the snappy transition there from the big wag as he drives away a little bit from the S13 that time. Wow, I did not expect to see that. That is... Jason Ferran is just... Sending it, he he's just coming on and on and on. You know, he's always been a good driver, but he's working these other drivers out. He's learning what he needs to do. He's dialing that R31 wags, and I mean that thing was only built last year from a bare shell uh, to get it ready to rock and roll in the racing series. And the keep it Reet R31 wags is absolutely rocking, man. I'm going to have to have another look at that replay. I tell you what, he really is pushing, I suppose, the snappy transition. It's a long wagon, but he manages to get that transition really snappy. I know he's working with a costal on the suspension of this one. Uh, but look at this. The first corner, he leaves a little bit of gap there, though. Harvey wants to put the nose in. Look how quick it snaps back there. Yeah, and for me, it snaps back well, but that's uh, the door was open there, and that's where I think it's made the difference. You know, Harvey's dug in and taken the... Taken the advantage there, got that door, and hasn't locked too much proximity. Look, while we're finalising our scores, dear, here, let's get down to Damo in the pits and see what he's got for us. <laughs> got the boys! How was that? What a ripper show. Tell us about it. You go first. Oh, that was wild. <laughs> it was all go. <laughs> Aggie, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. Uh... You got knocked out. That's all right. I got versus the dabs. I tell you what, we went in the first quarter. I was behind him, and then that was it. Smoke show, outlast the world. Yes! I couldn't see nothing. I was looking. I was trying to find a gap, and then uh, appeared something out of nowhere. But I uh, wasn't 
Was it there on race day? Dabs is killing it this year, and uh, he has been for a while. Um, congratulations, mate, and go all the way. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch up soon. Done deal. Let's go, boys. Keep going. Yeah, and uh, Andrew, uh, Aaron Jawar is going to be taking on Dale Campaign in the top four, too, to see who's going to battle it out, go for one and two and three and four. So that one's going to be a fantastic battle. We're still, though, in our top eight at the moment here at the High Tech Oils Pro Class. Now, I'm looking to see if we've got a result there to see who's going top four. And... It's actually Jason Ferran who's gone through up on our sheets. Yeah, well, Ferran's gone through, and the boys over there uh, judging have obviously had a bit closer look. I did go with Harvey on that one, but um, the boys have preferred the aggressive chase, which is fair enough. I, I only had it by a quarter of a point, so it was pretty close to an OMT for me, and I imagine while well, getting a nod from James, it was pretty close for them too. All right, championship leader Brody May now chasing down Glenn Omerod, who's a... Really a young gun when it comes to the Pro Series. He's come through the Pro-Am ranks as they get the transition back. Brody Mays had to do a fair bit of work. That Bonnie Ele in the Bonnie Electrical Car. Bonnie Energy. Bonnie, Bonnie Energy. Energy. Bonnie Energy. Too many That's spots right. to try and remember. I understand where you're coming from. And I tell you what, it was pretty cold down in Tasmania this morning, and I'm guessing that's because all the heat is at Winton Raceway today with these Tasmanian drivers just turning it on. Uh, the Bonnie Energy, you nearly had me saying Bonnie Electrical, yeah, yeah. No. the Bonnie Energy uh, S13 there just getting right up behind Glenn and applying the blowtorch. Not quite the best chase and I think that uh, Brody won't be entirely impressed with that or entirely happy with it. Uh, Glenn very, very smooth out in front so we're going to have to turn him around and see how we go. Uh, but yeah, a good battle. We'll watch him here again. The Trias replay as we check it out one more time there. And Glenn Omrod just drove away there. And he made a lot of work for himself here, Brody Mayer, where he's had to try and close that gap up, maybe thinking he's a slightly faster car. Do you see on the second corner, he's right up in. Then we see the emulation there as they transition back in the final corner. He's right up alongside him in the Bonnie Energy S13. Big horsepower. Like, that is a billet SR and that 2.4 litre. And what he pulled this uh, this week, 900 horsepower? Something like that. It's an amazing number for an SR. That's a, for those that don't know, an SR is just a, a, a mere little 2 litre four-cylinder engine and he's getting 900 horsepower. Obviously, it's forced induction. It's a turbo engine, um, but it's it makes heaps of power, that thing, and it's great to watch. Great to see the guys there. Let's see what Damo's got for us in the pits. Top four, baby. Top four, baby! Top We're four. still here! <laughs> uh, absolutely stoked. I mean, it proves that you just don't even need a proper working clutch to, to get through to the top, son. <laughs> they do say a proper working clutch is important. Yeah, yeah but no, nah, don't worry. It's just, it's just all about the 70% car working, 130% send. We got this, son. I'm nah, really enjoying it. Great lead. I was a little bit... A little bit wide, but I stuck with him strong, and I was sort of throwing it blind. He was blazing a bit, and I was like, well, where am I? Yeah, I, did, I, got, I did have a bit of a look. Like, I, I didn't get to see the whole run, but um, it, Matt obviously did, did do it reasonably. It, it was a very good run, but your lead, you seemed to, to, to get the gap on. The boys are a bit, bit hard, and they're saying you're hanging on by the skin of your teeth, but you feeling the same, or we, we still got more to go? I reckon they're probably feeling the same as the clutches, holding on by the skin. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, keep it going, mate. Thanks, mate. Oh, he's a big character, isn't it? It's great to have him here in uh, the High Tech Alls uh, Drift, you know, Drift All-Star Series uh, once again. Of course, they do have to keep it read as well down in Victoria. So very involved in the drifting. Here we go. Brody Mayer now is going to lead over Glenn Omerod. Will we see a change here as Brody Mayer rockets away there in the SR-powered S13. But Glenn Omerod just winds up the two. He doesn't let him go too far. He's not maintaining as close a proximity as what we saw. Brody Mayer really close that down on the second corner. And he starts to pull away a bit now, looking a bit more comfortable on that lead run for Brody Mayer. We'll check out the Tri-Ace replay now. And you can see him going through the gears there, the attitude of the car as it goes up and down. Brody Mayer there. And Glenn Omerod doesn't have too bad there. He's got a... Pretty close proximity there. It's a transition here where he's a little bit later transitioning compared to Brody Mayer there. And again on the final corner, he's just starting to pull away from it at this point. In the Bonnie Energy S13 there goes up the main straight and opens that gap up. And Glen Omrod will always going to be a close one. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I think both guys did a pretty good lead run. Um, Brody just getting a little bit faster as he goes through there. Glenno tucking in and doing a very, very good job. He's very, very smooth. He knows how he's going with these, uh, this car. He's getting that uh, GT86 dialed right in now. Um, Brody pulling away a little bit. We've got to work out a couple of scores. Damo down in the pits with Matt Harvey. Yeah, Matty, unfortunately taken out by the purple people leader. Yeah. How are you feeling? Give us a rundown on the run. Um, I did. I did everything I could. Unfortunately, we just uh, lacked a little bit in power, to be honest, coming around the, obviously the last 
section is all about power. So unfortunately, we just didn't have enough power. We we're 150 kilowatts down on the old barra. So it's um, no, it's it's we did we did really good this weekend. It's points, which is good. So um, we'll be ready again for ne uh, for next round of Queensland. Yeah. So when you say when you say to power, just for the people at home. Were you surprised at the... I mean, I watched... The, I did have a bit of a look at the run, and, and he did get a good sort of pull on you in that section. You do have good grip in the car. Is it something that maybe if you battled him again, you could switch in a bit earlier and try and get up on it, or is it literally just, that's it, and there's not enough power? It's it's obviously... You can I'll do, it like, little things, like I couldn't maybe, if I really wanted to, jump to the ripper strip to try and get on the power a bit quicker, but at, at the end of the day, 150 kilowatts is a lot of power. Like, it's over 200, 300 horsepower, so it's going to always be that difference of power versus grip, and yeah. obviously you had both where I didn't have the power, but I had the grip, so. Yeah. No. Well, it's always a pleasure having you and the family coming all the way over from Tasmania, so thanks again for that, and we'll see you next round. Yeah, Go another step again. Thank you very much. Thanks, Matty. Well, a little bit of exciting news coming through, and uh, Matt Harvey will be excited to see that Glenn Omeron has defeated the current leader of a series champ, or ser not series champion, but series leader, Brody Maher, being knocked out there by Glenn O in that GT86 with the 2J100. That's going to seal our pro top four, so we're going to have Dale Campaign going up against Aaron Dewar and Jason Ferran taking on Glenn Omeron in the top four a little bit later. But before we do that, we've got to get on to our zoo performance Pro AM series and try and settle who's going to be battling out for the podium in that one, mate. Yeah, here we go. We're going to see Bogey Gliardi taking on Matt Murphy. Uh, as you can see up on our screen at the moment, we are going through what's going to be our battle ladder there for our high tech oil drift stars. A drift all star series in the pro category. Dale Campaign, Aaron Jouar will go and battle it out. Jason Perrin and Glenn Omerod will battle out, like you said before, and we'll find out who's going to go into the final for one and two, who's going to get on that step of the podium, and who's going to battle out for third and fourth. So obviously, our two winners will go through, see who's going to be first or second. And the two that don't win will have to battle out, see who's going to come third on that last step on the podium here in our high tech oilers pro categories. We chat to all our sponsors. Tri-A's High Tech Motorsport Tyres, High Tech Batteries, MoTech Raceline, Van Gogh Rapid Repair Centre, Brakes and More, Orange Hire, and of course Power Wow. It's got our man SPH Haulage. Hey, we move over now to our top four in the Zoo Performance Pro-Am and have a look at this battle ladder. They are coming out on track right now and it's going to be Bo Gagliardi, the VA Power, the LS, the Well, taking on Matt Murphy in that RB Powered R33 and then it's going to be Kieran Ratcliffe going to keep going through in that R34 front at R33, taking on Matty Walters in the Drift Angry R33. Well, I tell you what, it is going to be all action now from the top four all the way through to the final battles that we see this afternoon here at uh, Winton Motor Raceway for High Tech Oils Drift All-Stars, round number three, mate. It is lighting up and these boys are coming around now, cruising around the back there of the uh, the back section that we did, the back M's last time round. They'll be going to line up, but before we get them away, we're going to jump, jump down and talk to Damo. Yeah, Brody, shattering moment, obviously we're out, uh, we've got Jason Ferrin still in from the top three, he's going through to the top four, Matt Harvey's out as well, yeah. bit of a championship shake up, how are you feeling? I look to be honest, uh, with how we started yesterday, going in the wall on the very first lap after that diff breaking, um, smashing a tail shaft in qualifying, contact this morning with Javed and smashing a rim off it and bending the rear end. Um, to make it this far, I think it's just a credit to everyone involved. Uh, obviously, not our best day in the office, but, you know, we've obviously done well the first two rounds, and if this is as bad as it gets, it's not that bad. Yeah, and look, you always soldiering on, and the next round's going to be a ripper. He's a hug from Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but congrats to Glenno, though. Yeah. He threw down like a sweet lead, so... Yeah, it was well pretty deserved. impressive. Thanks, mate. Thank you. All right. I mean, look, he's a, he's a humble guy there, 27 and single also. Yeah, 27 and single. Got taken out by a bloke that apparently, <laughs> according to the uh, socials that were flying around last night, does like men. And uh, Jason Ferran couldn't come up with anything to, uh, to rebut that. So, look, it doesn't matter which way you are. We're, a, we're an equal opportunity sort of a business down here with uh, Drifting World, so you can get involved with anybody you like. Jason's probably going to kill me for saying that on a live stream later, but... You know, he's a good bloke, likes to laugh, and I did threaten him that if Matt didn't get up to it, then he would. It's good uh, to have you here, Dave. Um, and, of course, uh, we will be having our pro-ams come out next, all thanks to Zoom Performance there. And Zoom Performance, fantastic product. If you want to check them out online, they are doing 
pretty much everything you need to make. I've made diffs, gearboxes, uh, belts, hoses, clamps, uh, fixings. Um, mate, if you want it, bright colours, really dress yourself up, and they are supporting a lot of the guys there, including Matt Murphy, who Zoo Performance just got on board with. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's see how this battle goes and how the results come through. Here we go, Matt Murphy's going to lead this one out. Bogo is going to have to wind up the LS, put a bit of RPM, because the whole boo has been jammed in that RB for the Team Blast car. Boy, he's a little bit shallow back. Gagliardi there keeps that proximity, though. Goes a little wide there on the final clipping point, but doesn't want to let Matt Murphy get away. And what a battle we've got in this top four of the Zoo Performance Pro-Ams. We check out the Tri-Ace replay now. Matt Murphy leads away. And you can't miss the Team Blast colours, the bright yellow and pink. Definitely a contrast in colours there, isn't it? And Matty Murphy doing a good job in entering early, getting it wide, leaving the opportunity, and Bo taking the opportunities. He managed to duck in there and get into his space again all the way through, following him around, and even improving, you can't see from that angle, but improving the line a little bit on the exit of that corner, uh, the third corner there. You'll see it better from this angle as he comes out there. A really good run from the boys. It's going to be interesting to see how they switch it around. We are at the pointy end of the field now, Matt, and they have to get it sorted. Yes, they do. They have to get a sort of gaggly hardy day. Like, how good does he throw around that big car? And, mate, it's, uh, he managed to maintain that proximity. He's got a fair bit of grip going on there. Ooh, the judges got a little bit of work to do. They're going to turn around, and in the meantime, let's catch up with Damien. Yeah, we're getting down to the pointy end now, boys. We're only a couple of battles away from someone spraying champagne. <laughs> Smell a bit of anxiety. How are we going, Glenn? How are you feeling? Yeah, good. Top, first top four in the 86, so I finally broke the top eight curse. So, yeah, feeling good, ready to go. Yeah, Jase, how are you feeling? Feeling good. I uh, already do. I'm actually stoked we made it this far, so uh, let's get it on. It's all between the 2J and the Barra now. We're both on the trio, so we're on the grippy boys. But, you know, what's going to happen, son? What's going to happen? I'm going to stick it to your door, that's for sure. Are you going to return it? Uh, definitely. <laughs> that's a boys. Let's go. I think he's going to have a chat with Dale Campaign today. He will stick it to his door. He's not worried about that. Yeah, no, these boys, it's good to see a bit of, uh, a bit of, bit of smack talk, talk coming through from the boys. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're doing a great job out there. It's, it's red hot. Um, no one's giving an inch, and uh, that's what we expect from the top four. Gag Leone is going to lead this one out. Matt Murphy, what can he do from Team Blast? We'll have to wait by Gagliardi. He gets the transition in, but look at the speed he's carrying there. Looking a lot more comfortable. The car settled down. Watch for the transition there, though. Murphy closes the gap up there. Use a little bit of the ripple strip to make that happen. Gets that proximity on the final corner. And the big RPM from Bo Gagliardi as the LS winds up. And the back bar now hanging off for Team Blast. And, well, Bango's got a bit more work to do. Yeah, Vango Rapid Repairs. We've seen that car through the week by the sounds of things. Uh, the, you can see here the bow just rockets off. Uh, hooked up that car so much better. Got cracking, but Matty Murphy just sacrificing a little bit of angle. Being wise, transitioning a bit early, looking for that pocket and chasing him back up. But of course, what that does is it means he's coming in closer and now he's got sucked up a little bit behind and just escorted himself off the track a little bit, dropping one wheel. It's going to hurt him. It's going to be interesting. Let's see what the boys have got to say. Well, we'll check it out one more time on the Tri-Ace replay here, and you see Gagliardi's car hooks right up there and drives away, throws it right into that first corner with a whole bangle, leaves the gap out there for Murphy, which he does, takes it and closes that proximity down. Turn number two, he just uses a little bit of the ripple strip, gets on it here, and Gagliardi there, <laughs> big fishtail down there, and it just... Unfortunately for Matty Murphy, in the, just using him as a clipping point, there he goes a little bit too wide there and drops the wheel off on the corner of the track there and loses his back bar. Yeah, just running a little bit too wide there. Good stuff from the guys down the OB and from AVE, just getting us those still shots. So thank you to the boys back down there and, and making it a little bit easier for us up in the judging tower. Not something you always have too, Matty. You know, you and I have done events together around uh, around Australia where you don't always get a replay. So the technology here and the boys that put together the show, they do a fantastic job. And uh, look, we do have a result come up on our screen, and I'm just trying to make sure that is correct. Yep, Bo Gagliardi is going to get the win that time and will be fighting it out to see if he can get himself his first win when it comes to the High Tech Oils uh, Drift All-Star Series and, of course, the Zoo Performance Pro-Am category. Will he get the win this weekend? We're going to find out who he's going to be taking on because it's going to be Kieran Ratcliffe now taking on Matty Walters in the Drift Angry R33. So Walters will have to chase here, and it hasn't been his strong point here so far today. He's been really strong in the lead runs and he's always had them second time round. He keeps coming in as a bride, but he has to follow in in the bride. So here we go. Kieran Ratcliffe is going to lay it down first time here. Winds a bit of angle on and we can see right there Walters ducks the nose in. A little bit of a late transition and a straighten as well and you can see the car understeers there and 
doesn't get back in to that drift either in the final part. So that's, you can already see the frustration in the driver's seat. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, I don't know what's happened there. And Matty's been battling so hard from a poor result yesterday. Not a poor result, but just an unfortunate result with that front tyre debris. Uh, he's going really, really well there, getting it in there, tucking it into that pocket. Kieran leaving the door open like we asked them to do in John Driver's briefing. Matty just chasing up a bit too much. And I think he unsettled the car a bit there. You could see the use of the handbrake to try and pull it up. Almost like Kieran was going a little bit slower than he expected. Having said that, though, that drift ang angry R33 green monster is pretty quick. Well, wait and see, because he's been so aggressive and so dominant in his lead runs as well. So we'll have to wait and see how that unfolds there. Like we say earlier in the previous run, Bo Gagliardi has gone through for the win. He'll be fighting it out for that first position here in our final four of the Zoo Performance Pro-Am. And Matt Murphy will get to battle it out for third position. But who will he be battling? That's what we'll have to find out. Let's go and catch up with Damien. Yeah, thanks, Matty. Just here with Dale. Uh, we're into the point here now, uh, the GH Haulage. S13's up here again, always gets up here, you've got the big jewel. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's going to be a tough battle. Um, uh, before, I would like to thank GH Haulage and Kimo Tyres. Uh, they've been massive this weekend. Honestly, could not do it without those guys. But yeah, we've got uh, Aaron next, so let's see if we can get through his uh, smoke cloud without uh, making any mistakes. That's uh, the biggest issue on this track at the moment. There's only one way to do that, stay on his door, not behind his tyres. Exactly, so I've done wrong, I've done wrong. So yeah, let's uh, all, the, all the best. Good luck, Dale. Damien Cook down there. He's giving the boys a bit of a school. I noticed he's picking up on people's uh, English a little bit earlier, and now he's telling them how to drive. Uh, Cookie, one of our fierce competitors, unfortunately not able to compete this weekend um, due to his car just not quite getting back from the fabricator in time to get it all ready and prepped and ready to rock and roll uh, for this weekend. But Damien, uh, hopefully back in Queensland, back in the R33. Uh, you can see Kurt Dunn there in the background too, just doing his hair. I don't know why. It doesn't, not going to make any improvement. And a big thanks to all of our crew out there on the ground. It's not the warmest space out there at the moment, but they're running around flat out keeping this going. There's not a lot of them, but they do an awesome job. Matty Walters is going to let us out. The Drift Angry R33, and he's been so dominant in his lead runs, and he winds it on again, throws it in with some big angle. Ratcliffe now has to try and maintain that proximity, use a little bit of that ripple strip to make that happen, and stays on the back quarter there. Nice battle here in our Zoo Performance Pro-Am category, but Matty Walters struggling in that chase run previously, and I think that is probably going to hurt him in the scores. We'll wait for the official results to come through from our judges to confirm that, but we look up here at the Zoo Performance Pro-Am category, and... Yeah, the Drift Angry R33 of Matty Walters has no drama laying down a stout lead run. He's just been struggling when it comes to those chases. Yeah, and look, I was going to say, it seemed like maybe Matty had had a problem and lost a bit of power. He seemed a bit slower. It felt a bit slower from up here in the judging tower watching him. Um, maybe a bit of a steering problem. I'm not quite 100% sure. But again, the other side of it is Kieran is really quick as well. We've noticed that Kieran can really get moving. So... Maybe it's not something with that. Maybe it was an error from Matty in the chase position. Either way, something is actually hanging down from underneath that car. I, I couldn't quite make out what it is. It looks like there's something underneath the middle of that green R33 that's hanging down. Maybe something's come loose, taking a bit of power out of it. Anyway, we've got Damo down in the pits. He's busy chasing up more information. Yeah, we're here with Aaron Jewett. Aaron, we're just talking to Dale, obviously, your next battle. We're getting up to the point end now. He seemed to feel that his little six-cylinder would be all good to get up on your door. Is that going to be a return favour, or you feel basically we'll just gap him and fill his cab with smoke? I don't know. You seem to be really jamming this in my face a bit today. Um, yeah, well, I reckon we should be all right. We had a bit of a mishap in practice, but I think Dale's ready to redeem himself, and it's going to be something pretty wild. Yeah, that sounds like the plan. Um, who's leading first? Uh, I think Dale's on the lead. Let Dale's leading first. Okay, so just blaze him. Sounds like a plan. Thanks, guys. Do you think we get a bet on, like, if, if Dale if Dale loses, he has to grow a mullet, and if Duar loses, then he has to shave off the mullet and get a haircut? Oh, well, what a bet that would be. I mean, if we're going to do something like that, I think we need to make sure we're raising some funds for some sort of a charity with that, because that, I mean, wow. Maybe that could be the final round in Sydney. You, you know what? There's plenty of people out there that can jump on a keyboard. Someone's going to make that up for us overnight, I'm sure, and that'll be hitting the socials. I just want to see a Photoshop of Duar's mullet now on Dale campaign. That's exactly where I was going with that, mate. I'm glad you picked up on that little lead for you, but wouldn't that be something uh, rather disgusting, I reckon, to look at? <laughs> Well, look, it looks like he's washed the diff oil out of it before. It didn't have that nice flow effect like it had before. He said, that's just a diff oil shine. That's what that yeah, is. no, it's probably just come through from, uh, from him just blowing tyres off the back of it and blowing the oil out of it. <laughs> anyway, here we are with the Zoo Performance Pro-Am Battle Ladder, and this has been set now, ready to rock and roll. We're going to have Matty Murphy, the Battle of the Mats, taking on Matty Walters.
in the battle for third. So one of them gets a trophy, one of them gets to stand there and look a little bit more awkward. Uh, let's hope that whatever it is with Matty Walter's car gets sorted out because that can be an absolutely awesome battle. Uh, and, of course, Bo Gagliani making it through the finals. Going to feel a little bit weird, I think, because he's the only bloke in the top four without an R33. But he'll be taking on Kieran Ratcliffe, another one of our newer drivers. Good to see these boys screwing up the, the order and getting to the pointy end. Uh, it's going to shake up the, the uh, points table a little bit, I'd say, and we'll have to see how that all settles out for our post-production show, which will be done later on down the track. But for now, that's what we've got coming up very shortly. Um, we're looking for a couple of cars, it looks like, just to get going. Uh, obviously, just to run down through the current points for the Pro Championship, uh, Pro Am Championship. I think you got that there, Matty. Yeah, Brian Crookshank sitting up there on 182 points. Sam Mudge on 161. Now, Matty Murphy's still in this, although he's fighting it out for third position. He's on 144, so he's the one that can take a big advantage out. This maybe he can get in the second, maybe can push right up on Brian Crookshank. But right now, we might head back down to Damien. Yeah, we don't have Scott Shemery, uh, half the high tech plays unit. Uh, look, it's all, the, it's all the team. It's got all the gear, the power, the car, the tyre, the driver, the package is there. It just hasn't wanted to play all year. Scott, still some misfire issues yesterday. Please tell us we sorted it. We turned this thing to 11. We're ready to go. Uh, well, yeah, we have got it on full boost, but yeah, still having, um, still having the niggling issues. So, look, we're just going to have to drive it how it is today, and then we'll get back and get down to the track and actually um, have the tuner there with us and, and nut it out. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit demoralising, but, you know, like... We'll get it sorted and get back out there. When the car is on song, though, it's on song. Like, everything there, the package is there. It must be super frustrating for guys out there playing. This ain't an easy game sometimes. It tests every nerve in your body. If she's on, you're on, though. Yeah. No, when it's on, the car's there. So it's just, yeah, like you said, it's very frustrating because um, we know we've got the car there. And obviously with COVID and everything over the last couple of years, not doing laps, it's just really want some seat time. So... We'll get through today, do whatever we can do. Um, hopefully we can just sneak through a couple of runs and get through a couple of battles and do a bit better this round. But, yeah, we'll, we'll come back next round bigger and stronger. Who got your first battle? Uh, I think I got Mickey Moo. Mickey Moo, okay. So she's going to be a smoke show. Yeah. 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 We'll awesome. Just, we'll just go send it and put on a show for the crowd. And, um, yeah, like I said, we'll be back next round bigger and better. But still, still do what we can today. Fantastic. So Scott Chambray, always a great bloke in the sport. Hopefully we can get this thing turned up and going and... Uh, if she keeps going, it'll get on the top spot. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, well, Scott Shembury just uh, reflecting on earlier thoughts from the morning, this morning there. Um, and, uh, yeah, as we know now, he's uh, unfortunately not made it through to the top uh, four, and he'll get back there, uh, I'm sure, for, uh, for the next round. They'll get the car sorted out. They're a hard-working team. Uh, but at the moment now, we're going to get down to Damien, who's in the pits. He's got Bo Gagliani, I believe. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Bo... The ups and downs are drifting, and not that long ago you were starting to lose a little bit of enthusiasm and passion, and it's just not working. Mate, you're one battle away from spraying champagne. What a ripper battle with Matt Murphy, and we're ready to go. Like, literally, win or lose the next battle. You're standing up on a podium, and we're giving you claps. Like, how are you feeling? Uh, look, mate, it's, uh, it's pretty overwhelming, to be honest. You know, to go, like you said, almost put on the pin to here we are. We had a rough trot for a while, but team got it sorted again. You know, race works, and... You know, just like everyone involved got this thing really firing off, so I'm, I'm hyped, I'm over the moon, I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. And either way, I get to spray that champagne and I get a big check, which is what it's all about, the big novelty check. That's it, mate. <laughs> Keep it going. Good luck. Thank you, sir. It's always good to take a big check. They don't like, they don't like what you take in the bank, though. Yeah, no, they, they always, uh, particularly now with all these COVID screens, I imagine what it would be like trying to feed that through the COVID screen. <laughs> under there. Can you cash this one for me? I need to go and buy some more tyres. Well, do they make it out to your mine issue with CASH, do they? <laughs> no, no idea. I, I might go and find the checks now. I'm going to go for a walk. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Bo Gagliardi might be there. He might get the win here this weekend. The only one that's not an R33 in our finals. Well, could it be the top one, mate? We really don't know. But for now, we've got the High Tech Oils Pro Series coming out. We've got our top four. We've got to have see Dale Campaign, the number one qualifier, taking on Aaron Duar, back from a little bit of a hiatus in the in the screaming uh, S13 there. And then we've got Jason Ferran and Glenn Omeron. They're already been kicking each other around in the pits, mate, so 
Whichever way it is going to go, this is going to be exciting. Well, how long can Jason Kern drive that car at 130%? And how long can the car stay at 70%? I think he's, he might have to drive at 140%. It seems to be having some dramas getting through the gears. They've been struggling with their slaves on the bed to try and get that clutch operational to its full capacity. But well, we don't know. Next up, though, let's see our first battle here in the top four. Who's going to go through in to battle out for the one and two position? We'll have to find out because we've got the smoke machine. Aaron Jouar, who's going to be chasing down the number one qualifier, Dale Campaign, who's only been here for one round so far of the High Tech Oils Drift All-Stars, and he's already up in seventh position in the championship after just one round. The amount of points he came runner-up over at the Bend in South Australia just a couple of months ago, or just a month ago. Here we go. Jouar, Campaign. Campaign going to lead us out in the GH Haulage Kumo Tyres S13. Jawar getting right up on the door there. He doesn't do a bad chase run normally. A little bit late on the transition there. Keeping it nice and snappy there for, for Campaign as he gets through the final corner. And Jawar just turns on the smoke show. No drama catching at all in those last couple of corners. Yeah, no, look, Aaron, uh, obviously a seasoned competitor now, and you can see, you'll see it in a minute, where he just hangs up there and transition a little bit longer, because, believe it or not, I think he might be the quicker car out there at the moment. Ducking in nicely, Dale Campaign leaving the room, diving in on the door, hangs it there a little bit longer before he transitions, just to allow Dale to get around, then ducks back in, back on the door, switches it back around, probably could have been a little bit closer through that last outer zone, but... You know what, overall, that's a pretty good chase run against one of the quickest leads in the, in the business. Yeah, putting down a solid, solid chase run there over someone who can, uh, well, do these lead runs all day. His qualifying is really phenomenal for Dale Campaign, and that's why he was number one here this weekend. So he keeps doing that, and uh, Aaron Jouar just needs to put down a solid chase run. The question is going to be is how much faster is Jouar going to be and how much pressure will that put on Dale Campaign? We're going to head down now to Damien. You ready? Yeah, Matt, we're going into, uh, obviously, a top three, four battle now. Uh, you've got Matt Murphy, so sailing the boats. Hear a whisper, there might be a little bit of hurting on the engine. Yeah, kind of on that last run, like in the chase run, um, I think I've heard a head gasket with nitrous trying to chase too hard. Engine didn't like it, so, you know, just turned it off for the last run. So I'm down on power, but, you know, see how we go. Did the danger, the manifold sign come up? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, well, there you go. I thought it might have been a bit down on power last time, and that confirms that it's lost its nitrous love, um, which is going to just hurt it a bit more. He's going to check the oil and make sure it's all together, and hopefully we can still see that car out for the final battle. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to do. Um, remember that uh, Winton here looking after us this weekend. They've done a great job. They're, they're busy preparing their track for the Supercars Championship, which will be here in just a couple of weeks, I think it is, Matty? Yeah, a couple of weeks. They're uh, going to be having the Supercars here, and that's why we see a fantastic facility obviously laid out, and we, it's a very grippy track when we come here in Drift That's what we noticed, isn't it, when we have those professional categories coming and racing at such a great venue. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And I, I believe from memory they resurfaced the track only a couple of years ago, and that was, that's given a whole heap of more grip to the track. So the guys are always chasing the cars and trying to keep it set up but you know wonderful facilities down here really is a good part of the world you know you can come out here you can camp here and you can do all sorts of wonderful things for supercars next week uh, the weekend after next sorry when that's on so I'm sure they'll have a packed house like they normally do for that um, remember you can always come along and watch us the high tech oils drift all stars as well when we travel around the country so next stop Queensland Raceway this time we're watching this battle right here here we go Jawar's got the smoke show on already as he leads us out he's had to do the chase run look at the speed he carries into the first corner oh campaign needs to Keep up, it's all smoke though. He's just driving blind. Muscle memory is what it is for campaigns. He sticks it to the door of Jouar. Oh, the end of this run and campaign is right there. Oh, it does not matter how fast it was. I want to see this tri replay. replay. Jouar steps on the loud pedal and smokes the tyres up. It's less than 100 metres out from the start. Quick transition there. Grabs a handbrake, throws in, opens up a nice big gap as well. Yeah, great start from Dabs there. Ticking it around. Obviously the quicker car, you can see um, a little mistake from Dale there, trying to dive in and stay in that proximity, losing a little bit of angle and catching up a little bit quickly there, using a bit of ripple strip, which wasn't supposed to be allowed, so starting to see some cracks coming in. I'm going to watch this replay because I tell you what, this is the part where you don't like being a judge. <laughs> what do you do, though, when you've got someone who is smoking the tyres and driving away from you at the start, throws on a whole heap of angle there, he doesn't worry about it, he washes off a bit of speed, slingshots it into the first corner, and if you Dale campaign, you know, mate, I cannot let him get away because I won't be able to see. If I give him any more distance, the tyre smoke will blind me. 
He does what he has to do. We'll have to wait and see how that fares with the judges, though. Well, it's going to be fun. We're going to find out who's going to go and battle it out for one and two here today at Winton Motor Raceway in round number three of the High Tech Oils Drift All Stars. And who's going to be down there battling it out for third position between those two, waiting for those judges' scores to come in? Next up, though, it's going to be Glenn Omerod, who's going to be leading out Jason Ferran, who's, mate, he's hot to trot. Yeah, absolutely, mate. These boys are on fire. Uh, Jason Ferrin just keeps to be ratcheting it up, just going more and more and more on that uh, on that battle. But good news, mate. I've just heard word through that that last battle is going one more time. Oh, no surprise there. Glenn Omerod there throws it in in the 86, and Ferrin is going to try and put the big R31 up on the back corner. Oh, emulation. There's a transition. Does it again as well. The keeper read R31. Oh, right on the back of Glenn Omerod. Take nothing away from Glenn. That was a fantastic lead run. We'll dissect it now here in the tri Tyres replay. Yeah, you can see the boys coming in really, really strong here. A great transition from both of these guys. And I tell you what, if you want to watch synchronised swimming with a whole heap of octane and tyre smoke, here it is right here. You can see Jason Fern tucking in, taking that opportunity underneath Glenn. Glenn transitions back and Jason tucks it straight back in there again. And then another snappy transition from Jason Ferrin in the R31. Keep it right, Wags. Giving it to that Connect Electrical uh, GT86 of Glen Omeron, that is an awesome chase. Oh, the Connect Electrical 86, uh, look, if you put that down as a qualifying run, it'd be right up there. He, he did qualify quite well this weekend also. Uh, Glenn Omerod, as we, we go back there, he was sick in qualifying, and that was one of those runs there. But Jason Ferrin, the aggression when it comes to the chase. Now, can Glenn Omerod emulate that when he chases? Can he be that aggressive? Is he going to put the risk on there? Because you've you got to risk the car at some point. You're risking the body kick. You're risking a little bit of damage. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Glenn is going to have to now. He's been forced. He's, he has been forced now to get out there and throw down. He's Normally, little Mr. Consistent that likes to just cruise around, ticks off all the points, to picks up the bits and pieces. He was a little bit shallow in turn two. Little bobble from Ferran in turn three. It's pretty even in my books, and Glenno is going to have to absolutely deliver in that chase run, particularly if Jason, who has been all day, lays down another one of those clinical lead laps. So let's see how they rock and roll. The boys here for the OMT just in the background there. They're going to get the other boys through. Um, I'm fairly sure that Dabs will be changing tyres, and I'm pretty sure that Dale isn't. I'm getting a shake of the head from race control that the boys are just going to post it again. That, no. my friend, is gutsy. That is amazing. Those tyres, I don't know whether they're on the Tri-Ace tyres or something different, but, oh, well, we know Dale's on the on the Kumos, but think, they're going to be hurting by the I end of the four I think he's going to be on the Novas there. I reckon he's got the Z performance behind him. We'll have to wait and find out. This time, though, Jason Ferrin can be, be ag as aggressive in his lead run as he was in the chase. He takes it off the big barrier. It's still changing gears. It's holding together. The boys have done a fantastic job. They've got big angle in the wagon there, and Omrod doesn't let him get away too much. Oh, they switch back there, leaves a big gap for Omrod. He's not letting him get away. Ferran, they brought, brought, uh, put the power down there, the 580 kilowatts of Barra power, and just drives away a little bit in that final corner. There's not much in it. You want a job, Matty? Because I'm not uh, sure I want to split this one. No, nah, I, I don't want the job of being a judge in this one. But look at Jason Ferran here, just putting it all on the line there in the keeper read R31 wagon. Yeah, absolutely. Big angle from Jason early on. Glenno doing almost exact same thing as that Jason did to him in the in the uh, the other way around. But just here, this is where there's a little bit of difference. Jason's able to dial in that grip, like you called it, and just gra grab a little bit of gap on Glenno. Yeah, big 580 kilowatt barrel will do that to you, I reckon. The, uh, the big barrel, a whole lot more torque as well, and I think that's when you get out of the transition, you're off the throttle for a second while it slides, and you get back on it. The barrel's got the torque there to really pick up on the boost quickly. It's his final corner, you see the transition there, and he nails the accelerator there and just starts to open up that gap on the 86.
the first corner, trying to get that extra speed out there. The car went wide, unsuited him. He wasn't familiar out there like he was before, and spins the car around. It's very unfortunate. Uh, of course, you're having a great time here at Winton Motor Raceway. Don't forget the supercars are here in just a couple of weeks, back here at this fantastic venue, and we need to thank Winton Motor Raceway for... Uh, Obviously, having us here as the High Tech Drift All-Star Series and being back for round number three. We were here last year for round number one. We've been over South Australia. We're back at Winter Motor Raceway here for round number three here today. We head up to Queensland for the second week in, weekend in July as well for our next round, round number four. And then we go back to our home, obviously, in Sydney Motorsport Park for the High Tech Oils Drift All-Stars. Of course, the Zoo Performance Pro-Am category going throughout the year. And Brian Crookshank was leading coming into this round. We'll have to see how that goes. And Matt Murphy getting on. Uh, we're getting in the top four there, so he's going to collect the bag of points where Brian Crookshank didn't make it into that top four, so he might be closing that gap down. Remember, Matt Murphy came into this in third position. Yeah, mate. Well, look, we're just getting the results through now, and hopefully Cookie's somewhere down on the ground, Damien Cook there, uh, to be able to have a chat to the winners as they come on in. Um, but the, the uh, results for the weekend, and we're going to go in reverse order today. Uh, fourth place, as we might have thought, is going to be Matthew Walters. Um, and we're watching the, the replay again of, of how the final went down. So Matty Walters picking up fourth. That, of course, means Matty Murphy in the yellow and pink team uh, Starburst uh, R33 is going to get a third place and a trophy today. In second place, obviously, as we see, Kieran coming spinning to a stop is going to be Kieran Ratcliffe. Great drive from him all weekend. Really, really done a great job. And, of course, the winner coming across the line there, Bo Gagliani. Uh, it's not a race to the finish, but in that case, it kind of was, man. Yeah, it kind of was there, and uh, uh, battling out with all those R33s we saw in the top four there, and it's going to be a bit of V8 power in the end. They will overpower him and be triumphant there in the Zoo Performance Pro-Am. So it's our feeder category to get into the pros, and I mean, there's so many other drift competitions around the Australia if you want to get involved in drifting and be part of it. so much grassroots drifting, and then when you want to get in that competitive side, you come to something like Pro-Am, where it's still that in between uh, when it comes to the price, I suppose, and the level of skill that you have, and you hone those skills in the seat. So many of those pro-am drivers now, and they're getting ready for those pro cars, I reckon, in the next couple of seasons. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's the whole idea behind the pro-am competition was introduced <clears throat> to try and bring the drivers up, bring the level up, get them used to that travel, the travelling around the country. It costs a bit to tow a car around the country. People don't always understand how much money and effort goes into doing a national series. Um, Great to see the boys stepping up. They're stepping up on the track as well. The cars are developing. They're bringing them forward. That's what we need them to do. Once they do that, they start to get used to it, they, and they start to look to start using those more grippy semi-slick tyres. Of course, again, that adds another cost to it. Um, not saying that the boys don't want to do it. They love it. They're always here, and it's great to see some awesome competition coming out. Like I said to you earlier in the day, from the top 16 on in the Zoo Performance Pro-Am Series today, it was absolutely cooking. It was brilliant to see. The guys were just throwing down hard. Um, all the way through to the final. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the final we wanted. It was looking like it could have even gone for an OMT. I had it all locked up after the first battle, and, and Paul Kieran threw it away in the end, but he's gone through. Let's head over to the High Tech Oils Pro categories. We get into our top four now. We had our top four. They battled it out. Now we know who's going to be battling it out for third position. It's going to be between Aaron Juar and Glenn Omrod. Aaron Juar with the big, big horsepower LS there in the S14. He's going to be taking on Glenn Omrod in that very nimble 2J powered 86, which has a lot of the, the essence of Bo Yates about it there. And in the final, we're going to see Dale Campaign. Well, the tortoise taking on the hair there. Jason Ferran in the Keeper Reed R31 wagon. A fantastic final. We're about to get that underway. In the meantime, let's catch up with Damien. Yeah, we've got some great... All right, guys, ready? Yeah. Zoo Pro AM Championship. One of you has taken it. You both had a ripper day. Bo you've done it! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well done, Kieran. <laughs> yeah, look, How I was... Uh, look, it's wild, man. I... Uh, Kieran's a top-notch driver. Yeah, we both had, we both had a, like a rough run at the last at the last round, so it was good to get up there. You know, it was just. Oh man, I, got, I haven't got words yeah, for it. That's all. Right. We'll get some later. We're back for a pre-battle round. Well done. Good job, Thank mate. you. Good audio there from yeah. Damien down in the pits with Bo Gagliardi. Look, he was just so pumped to be in the top four and. Well, what an introduction to the series. Yeah, we'll see him on the podium a little bit later. But before we get to that, mate, we've got the final. We've got uh, the third place battle first up, then the final of the High Tech Oils Pro Series for the uh, Drift All-Stars here. They're getting ready. They're about to say, this is the finals. Let's get ready to roll. Oh, let's see who's going to let her eat. Of course, he's got the yeah, nah under the bonnet. 
Can he do it? Here we go. Big angle there. The tyres are already blazing on the back of Jawar's car, the S14. And Omarod just trying to stick it to the door, just looking for that red stripe you see between the beige colour. And he does it. Glenn Omarod right there in the 2J Power 86. Doesn't let him get away. And the only way to stay with Aaron Jawar is to stay that close so you can't get smoked out. You couldn't even see him through the middle section of the track. There was that much smoke. Have a look here as he goes around through this corner. Dabs has just gone, you know what, I'm going to blaze this kid out. glenno has gone, yeah, cool, man, I'm all good with that. Let's go, let's have it. Disappears into the smoke. You think, where's he gone? Is he going to come back? Then all of a sudden, boom, there he is, pops out. And where is he? He's on his doormat. He's right there just giving it to him. Dabs will be frothing. That's obviously wearing off on Glenno because you watch here. Leaves the door open. Glenno dives in, takes that opportunity to get up there in there. Switches it round. A little bit of a shallow run from Dabs. That'll hurt him in the points. But Glenno, not phased at all. Straight in there. Back onto the line for Dabs. Glenno goes, yep, thank you very much. And let's get rocking and rolling. Oh, the Connect Electrical 86. Glenn Omerod behind the wheel and doing a fantastic job in the chase run over a very tough uh, lead run from Aaron Jawar. Although he wasn't right on the line the entire way, the amount of smoke the S14 puts out there with the big LS on board, it makes it so difficult for every car that chases it. And sometimes, you know, that's uh, there's a little bit of an advantage to the lead driver there. This time round, though, Glenn Omerod's going to lead, and we know how quick Aaron Dewar's car, but judging by that, not quick enough to get away from the 86. Yeah, well, I mean, Glenno's always quite nimble, quite quick, and he, he creates speed while still having angle on the car. So it's one of those things you sort of you watch him going around and, and you see, see him progressing, see him running through the, run, the runs, and I don't know, he almost looks like he's not going quick, but then when you get out there and battle him, he's gone. So... You, Dabs will have to be on his game here. Hopefully his spotters are in his ear and letting him know that, you know, that he's, if he's got an advantage, he hasn't got one, a big one, or he may even be down a little bit. It's pretty close at this stage. I don't know what the other judges are thinking. Uh, they're over the other side of the judging box. I'm obviously here with you, mate, and they're going flat out uh, looking at replays and working things out as well. So, mate, I'm looking forward to this. Glenn Omerod is so smooth, I think, with his transitions. It's not unsettled. The car is very settled. That's probably why it doesn't look as fast. But uh, when you put it up against the car, you know it looks fast. And you see how fast it actually is. Glenn Omerod, the connects the 86, throws it down, opens up a little bit of gap in Jawara. He's probably left that there because he knows he's going to stand on the loud pedal in the second and just close it down. And Omerod giving him more room as Jawara goes wide there on the back of this one. And now Omerod's starting to drive away. Jawara's going to really have to pedal it now. Oh, that final corner, I reckon Omerod might have opened up a little bit of a gap. I cannot wait to watch a try his replay and see what you think about this, Dad. Well, mate, you can see here, Dabs wants to stay with him. Glenno's a little bit slower off the line, as we saw before, but initiates well. Dabs, same thing, initiates, gets in there, gets into the pocket, comes around, but then he makes a little bit of an error and just stalls it up a bit too much here and falls off the back of the car. He needs to be in the pocket there. Again, turn two's bit and Dabs a little bit on the wall. Goes around... Of course, being back there, he's dropped that little bit of, of proximity and he just can't regain it against a, a quick, slick, like we said, Glenn Omer. And remembering that the judges are looking for the little points that they do wrong. They're deducting points away from a perfect run at this point of the competition. They're not adding points together. They're taking points away from a perfect run. And it's those little mistakes there that could cost you the difference. And we're talking half a point possibly between winning this battle and losing. They're going back to back. The chase runs are going to be compared by the judges here and they're going to Hopefully make a decision. We'll have to wait and see what that is. The Connect Electrical 86 are looking strong. And Jawar, well, he always comes out here and puts on a show. And no surprise, top four here this weekend. It comes off the back of what was a fantastic qualifying session for him as well. We actually qualified him fourth. Will he go four to four? He might be happy about that one. Glenn Omerod, if he can walk away here on a podium, what a week for him. He hasn't been able to break through that top eight, as we spoke to him earlier there, just trying to get through that curse. And imagine if he's on the bottom rank of the podium. Yeah, well, that'd be something pretty special for Glenn. His dad travels around as well. Both the Omeron boys, Glenno and Gre Grego, they both come charging around. They're a great couple of blokes uh, from New South Wales. Just really quiet, just cruise along, do what they need to do, just plug away. And, you know, we knew this was going to come from Glenn. He's won the Pro-Am Championship before he stepped it up in his old, uh, uh, old Corolla. Um, back in the day he, he, with the, the, the rotary in it. He managed to work his way through that field, beat those guys, decided to build a big car, step on up to the next one. So... Let's see what happens. We've, um, we've got a little bit of a delay here. We're just waiting for something to be sorted out out there. But uh, while we do that, mate, um, you know, we've got to, got to say a big thanks to all of our sponsors, all our officials, all of the crew that helped put this show together. You know, it's a, 
it's it's only a small team really that that put this on, and the guys work tirelessly behind the scenes to get the event up and going. Um, of course, George from High Tech Oils for all the work he does. He he really pushes hard, but. That's enough of that. George has got a thanks, and it's now time to send the final. Here you go, Dale Campaign and Jason Ferrin. Jason Ferrin's in third in the championship at the moment. These guys were two and three in the last round, and they battled it out to see who was going to go there. Now we get it here in the final. Who's going to be up on the podium? Ferrin there, sticking it to Campaign. He told him, you've already got a dent in your door. You don't need to hurt it anymore. Oh, he jumps a ripple stone. Oh. He goes off, and a big one into the barrier there for Jason Ferrin as it gets sideways. Big speed in the tyre barriers. We check out the Trias replay here. He said he was going to stick it to it. He's been having dramas with that clutch all day as well. And here we go. Dale Campaign throws it down. The keeper, Reet Wagon, has no drama sticking with him here as Campaign goes a little bit wide. They transition. He mimics him. What emulation does Jason Ferrin have? As they go through here, a little bit of a straighten there from Campaign. And here it is. Ferrin jumps the ripples to him and settles the car. And as Campaign comes back, he just doesn't want to make contact. I'm not quite sure if he made contact or not, but anyway, Ferrin has gone off into the grass. Yeah, a big set of tie wall there. There's a, it's a quad stack of tie wall. I can see a thumbs up from Jason. It's just down here under the com commentary box. Obviously, he's going to be in that car and absolutely gutted, but he's moving about. We can see that. He's uh, a thumbs up. Um, recovery straight onto the scene. A great job down here at Winton Motorsport Raceway to get there as quickly as they can. Um, you know, knowing Jason, that probably not even a big enough hit to make him stop, but it was a pretty big one. Medical wagging the way across now. Um, he's still in, still in the car at the moment. He's, uh, he's seeming okay, um, chatting to the guys and the officials, but yeah, big run. You can see there, all he's done there is he's got, got a little bit close to the back of Dale, couldn't transition to back. We talked about this in briefing. We put a note up to give them a little bit of space. Obviously, the heat of the battle, um, Jason there trying to, trying to push right up and get right up stay with him in that proximity. It was a, it was a good battle until then. Um, we'll just wait and see and make sure that he gets out of the car and that it's all OK. Um, yeah, I'll look, at the moment here, you can see that there, and Jason Ferrin there just made a little bit of contact with Dale Campaign, and Campaign loses a little bit of his rear bar there. And, uh, look, it's, it's projecting him off the road. He's moving around, he's around the car, so we'll wait to get the official word on how that is. But the keeper, Reed, the only thing he's going to be upset about, I think, is they've got a, a actual meet coming up in a few weeks up there at the start of June. So they got little, they're going to have to get this car nice and pretty. I'm sure Josh and the boys down there are cursing his name right now. Yeah, well, I mean, like you said, you know, this is one of the things you've got to be prepared to put the car into contact when you get to the pointy end of the field, and he's done that. Um, you know, small mistakes can sometimes make bigger, bigger, what looks like bigger areas. Obviously, the guys that are there have, have acknowledged that. There's a lot of tire areas there. We're going to go back through this run now with Dale Campaign leading out and getting ahead. Um, he's thrown it in pretty hard, pretty tight. Uh, Run a little bit wide, which allowed Jason to uh, to get up in into that door there as he comes back, transitions back around. Um, Jason keeping to close that proximity. Dale's made the error early. Jason getting right up and in there, and he's really trying to drive home that advantage with a snappy transition. Makes a little bit of error, and this has also contributed a little bit to this accident by just being a bit shallow, trying to wash off speed while keeping the angle on. Dale comes back, and I actually don't know if there was contact there. I think maybe it was because of... Jason just being a little bit more shallow that he may have had that uh, that little bit of a, a an offline situation. We're watching another angle here. Just as they duck out, watch as they come back in. Oh, maybe just a fraction of a contact there that has sent him across. Jason trying to transition. Look, that's battling, that's drifting. Um, we can see that Jason is out of the car now and he's checking it out and checking it over. And uh, Damien Cook's actually jumped up and joining me here in commentary while... Uh, while, while um, Matt Kavanagh gets ready for presentations and things. Jason there, as you can see on the screen, he's all good, he's happy. It's a big impact. Um, medical will take him, check him out. Um, with a bit of luck by the looks of thing, that thing, that he won't be too long before he gets back. Um, doesn't look like the car's going to continue, so he's obviously broken something a bit serious in there, and he'll be back very, very shortly uh, for the podium. Um, they're pulling the car out of the, out of the wall as we speak. So good result to see Jason up and about. Great to see... Uh, Great to see that he's feeling okay. Damien, you've, you've joined me up in here in commentary, mate. Um, how, how are you feeling? Obviously, you're good mates with, with, with Jason. Yeah, look, I, I was actually standing on the fence coming up here when he went in, and yeah, we are good mates, and it was, you know, when he gave the thumbs up, looking across, it was definitely a relief. Um, that last shot that you just showed up, it'd be interesting to see that again, because it does actually look like a bit of Dale's car came off. It does, so doesn't it? I think it? you yeah. could be on the money that there is a little bit of contact there as to... Whose cause that is, I'm not sure, but there's definitely the, the, the insinuation there that the, maybe there could have been some contact. Yeah, absolutely. There, there certainly could have been, mate. Um, you just never know how, how it's going to go in battles. You put 
put the cars out there. They, the boys all know that. They know that they're going to... Uh, they're going to potentially damage them, they're going to potentially bend them. They all look beautiful on the start of the weekend and then they go out there and they, they blow tyres off the back of them. And, and inevitably racing sometimes is also rubbing and um, sometimes you have damage. We always hope that we don't see big hits like this. We're going to go and have another look through the replay here and watch it right from the start. Dale leads out, big throw. He knows that he's got Jason and Jason's battling really hard and chasing really hard. Runs it a bit wide, that's wider than we asked for in the judges' briefing later on. Comes back around, gets it back online. Jason left him the space to get back in there and goes, yep, no worries, I'll get onto your door now. Nice snappy transition, which we've been seeing through from, from Farron in that uh, keep it read 31. And then all of a sudden, it's hard to see from that angle. This one shows it a bit better, but if you watch just as they come across, there seems to be a little bump right there on the 31 wags. And then a little bit, like you said, Damien, a little bit of something comes off the back of Dale's car. So maybe a little bit of contact in the transition. Um... You can see that bar's loose, whether that was from the impact or don't really know. It definitely uh, definitely was a big impact, but of course, like I said, there's four rows of tyres there, so they identified Winton Motorsport, um, Water Raceway is a great venue with plenty of safety around it. They've, they've identified that that's obviously a risk. Jason went in there in, in quite a big hit, but he, uh, he, he feels pretty good. He's gone with medical now. Um, we're just getting a bit of a note through from race control uh, that that's the case. Um, so he's gone with medical. They're just going to check him over and then we'll get him back for the podium. Um, Damien's still up here. Damien, mate, you've been down in the pits. You've, you've been down in the pits. You've enjoyed chatting around. I think you pretty much sent the battery flat in that microphone today, mate. You did a really good job for your first time. But, mate, let's talk a little bit about you and your car. Obviously, you, it had a big hit in Adelaide. Um, you did a great thing. You're a really good supporter of the series and you, you let uh, Mickey Moo borrow it. Unfortunately, he come unstuck against the wall and, and damaged all four corners of the things. That thing was an absolute mess. You know, I was, I was down there, I was clerk of the course, I went out, I checked that car out. It was an absolute mess, mate, and it nearly got back here. It went to the fabricator, it got all straightened out. Mickey Moo did all the work, put it all back together for you, but just didn't quite make it here. Yeah, look, that's pretty much the story in a nutshell. It, it really, it's been a heartbreaking experience. And for, for Mickey as well, you know, no one wants to be in this position. We are in it. Um, the best is done to get the car here. We haven't got it here. Rather than, I mean, there could have, really could have been some real crazy rush to get it here, but at the end of the day, it's just, you know, it's just not worth that sort of thing. So we, we're going to make sure the car comes back bigger, better, and stronger. We're committed to the high tech series, and and yeah, we want to do it properly. Yeah, mate. Well, look, you did a great job with the microphone. We'd much rather see you out there, see you battling the boys. But what we're going to do now, mate, we're going to go through the Zoo Performance Pro Am battle ladder. You can see there that Mitch Bo, Bo Gagliani had a good battle with Bo going through Matt Murphy. Uh, Steve Cerrone coming off uh, second best to him. Then Kieran Ratcliffe driving really well all weekend, doing a great job setting Jordan Sanderson. Great to see him, new, new face in the field and doing a really good job. And then, of course, the big one, Matty Walters, having a bad day in qualifying yesterday, sending Brian Cruikshank home. Then working all the way through, you've got your top four. They ended up being Matty Murphy taking on Matty Walters in the battle for third and Bo Gagliani making it to the final against Kieran Ratcliffe. Two guys that haven't been on the podium yet, Damien. Yeah, it really is a good sign. I mean, I've, I've actually watched Kieran in, in South Australia. I like his team presentation, and he's a really, really good, aggressive driver. He's, he's not going to be sitting in Pro-Am too long. Uh, as far as Bo, like, um, I don't know if you heard in the, in, the, in the interviews in the pits, you know, literally not that long ago, Bo was sort of pretty much at a point where he felt like putting the helmet up. Yeah, no, I did hear that, mate, and it, it, it's, it's good to see that he's stuck around, and he's got the results, and hopefully that'll rekindle the fire. I think that is. I think he's burning now, you know, like the flame is definitely lit, and it just shows for everyone out there, you know, this isn't a dream that you ride, you know, there's only two people that win, and there's a few other happy stories, and then you just got to keep pushing, and I mean, Bo's testament to that today, and good on the team. Yeah, absolutely, and we can see now the results for the High Tech Oils Pro Series with the Drift All-Stars there. Um, Dale Campaign taking on Scott Shembury, the, the Master Chef, having suffering some difficulties and some, some misfires. It wasn't ideal for him, but you can see he's got the car dialed and he's definitely going to come on. If he can get that misfire all sorted out, then he's going to be coming forward for sure. And we might, might start to see the, the Master Chef back up on the podium again, which would be fantastic. Another one to see back is Aaron Duar. And of course, someone that we haven't seen for a while on, in drift in general is Andreas Savarkas. Great to see uh, the boys out there having a battle. Um, Dad's getting the, the better of that one, the, the master and the apprentice, as we were calling it. Matty Harvey taking on Jason Ferrin. Jason doing an amazing job in that car all weekend um, to get us through and, and to uh, get himself through, even when the car was suffering. Matty Harvey, always consistent, always there. Brody Mark, Glenn Omeron, another good battle. It's all really pointing, when, even in the top eight. These guys went through to see Aaron Duar taking on Glenn Omeron in the, in, in the third place battle. And then the final was Dale Campaign and Jason Ferrin. Uh, we're just getting a note, I think, through that 
We, we might be sitting on the podium. I'm uh, waiting to hear through how that's going. I did see the crowd all heading around the corner. Um, great battles all the way through. Um, I'm not sure if you got to see much of it, Damien, but it was close. Uh, certainly from a judge's point of view, it was hard to hard to settle, and it was coming down to small errors early. Yeah, I was sort of like where basically where I was standing. I could see the top of the pits, and I could sneak through to the uh, to see the big screen. So I did get a pretty good picture of most of the day, and I, I feel the guys have stepped up a lot. It was very aggressive. Um, the driving was good, you know, you're getting one more times up in the top eight, it's, you know, it's insane. Um, the guys have really, really stepped it up, so yeah, I thought the, I thought the battles were good, and, and yeah, let's keep it going, keep the progression going. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, some damaged-looking weapons out there this weekend, but the boys will tune them up, they'll get them ready to rock and roll, and come back up for Queensland in, uh, in just a few weeks' time, second weekend of July up in QR, it should be a little bit warmer, we're going to the paperclip. Nice to go up there and, and see what that's about. That's always a track too. I mean, talk us through. You've done some battling and some racing up there. It's a, it's a track that's open. It's flowy. Um, I'm not going to give away any tips on which way we're going to set the track this time, but, you know, the whole series has been about trying to make sure that we're getting good, strong battles, and I think we saw that this weekend, and I think we'll see that again in Queensland. Yeah, and then there's obviously the other factor too that we're going to bring some different drivers out of, out of the woodworks up there. Um, you know, the last time that we went there, you know, the, Ian Botcher and... Levi Clark, and there were some really, you know, good drivers that came out of the woodworks to go. So that, and that spices things up too. You can see that with Dale here today. You know, going to the different states, it does sort of, it does bring different drivers out. So that's certainly going to be interesting. And it's a fast track. It is a fast track, you know. I mean, it's one of the things we talked a little bit about in the live stream today. Um, that These guys, like, they're entering this corner at 180-odd kilometres an hour. And, it, like, if you think of the speed that that is, that's... That's 60 kilometres faster than as fast as you can go. Well, it's actually 70 kilometres, isn't it? Faster than you can go anywhere on a, on a mm -hmm. road car on the road out there. So, And then you throw it. And then you throw it sideways. You know, it's... Um that it's an amazing, amazing thing that these guys do um, in, in these cars. The, the ability that you've got, as well as the other guys have got, to control these cars and these sorts of... These sorts of angles, these sorts of um, speeds is, is... It's pretty... It's pretty ballsy, I guess, mate. <laughs> it is. It's word. daunting, and then you've got someone else doing it with you at the same time too. So not only you're trying to rely on your own skills to some degree, you, you you're sort of trusting everything in someone else as well. So, you know, you stuff up, you stuff them up, they stuff up, they can really stuff you up. So it's it can, yeah. There's a lot of lot of pressure, um, and it, you know, when it gets to this pointy end as well, I mean, you, I, I don't know if you guys feel it up here walking through the pitch, and you know, you'd walk up to a guy with a microphone and a camera, and they're all ready. Yeah, G'd mate. up like they're ten tense, anxiety ready to go. Like it's you know the the tension is for real. Yeah, absolutely. The vibe and the hype around the pits is fantastic. You know you've got to get along to these events to to experience it, to feel it. You know, and hopefully QR Queensland, um, it's going to be going to be a great battle up there, and we're going to see plenty of plenty of hype and plenty of access. The pits are actually quite accessible up there too because of the there's no back to them, so you know you can talk to the guys underneath the. Underneath carports. We're going to have a quick little bit of a run through the battles here. We've got, uh, this is uh, Dabs versus um, Dale Campaign. So this is the battle for, this is top four. So you can see here Dale Campaign getting out nice little lead. Da uh, Dabs coming back around, switching back. Dale's always really consistent and runs the line, leaving the doors open. Dabs trying to take those lines as best he could. Um, had a good one, had a little bit of a gap though, just couldn't quite get up there and close proximately. We switch them around now, mate, and you're going to see Dabs out there in the front. This is the one I actually want to see. There's a few guys murmuring that Dale actually did a bit of a ripple jump here. He does do a little bit of a ripple jump, but his proximity was um, really quite good on the other end. And you can see, yeah, there's a little bit of a ripple jump there. You can see, too, that the proximity of the other end, and it came down to a, does a ripple jump outweigh a proximity for me. Um, I don't know which way the, the other judge went. Obviously, they went similar with me. Mm -hmm. um, in the proximity, like we've been saying all along, all series, we want to see door, we want to see people yep. on the door, right? So, and that's the entertainment. Yeah, and that's the entertainment. And Dale sacrificed a little bit of his line, jumped yep. the curb, but got the door in the end. So that was the reason why I went through. Again, Jason doing similar things. You know, he, he's right up on doors, and you see that too. He jumps the ripple. Oh, no, he has a bobble there. That's right. Yeah, he has a little bobble. Keeps going through. A little bit shallower, but keeps that door. So does the sacrifice there outweigh one or the other? Um, when they switch it around, you're going to see that that Jason still was able to run a good line, leave it out there in front, and uh, and and the speed of this wagon was just amazing. Look at that angle, you know, he just dials it in, whips it around. Um, Glenn doing a good job, a little bit off the off the zone there, but remember we said in drivers briefing you're allowed to be a little bit wider, and again, a a jump there, 
but wasn't able to gain the proximity. So that's the difference you see yeah. there, right? That, that if you use a little bit of a sacrifice, and I always talk about it in Drivers Bring when I'm chatting to you guys, sometimes it's good to make a little sacrifice to make a gain. Dale highlighted that really, really well. Um, we're going to see, this is the OMT actually, of the guys going around. So this went one more time the last time around. This is the, this is the reverse of it. Dale skipping away a little bit. The boys didn't change tyres. Maybe Dad was sort of going, nah, maybe I should have. You know, that thing eats tyres for breakfast. So Surprisingly, I actually had a look at the tyres afterwards. It still had tread on it. Wow. Yeah, it's running that's... the Zek Nova Super Sports, and it was, it was impressive that they were, it could have actually done another run. Fair dinkum. Well, we were talking about that in the commentary about whether it would have lasted. So that's just a good testament for those Zek Nova tyres. They obviously hang on quite well. Um, you can see here a nice line, leaving it open again. Uh, and again, Dale does that little jump, but gets the proximity right up there. Comes in close. Follows him through, sacrifice to make gain. Um, again, look, I've, it was pretty close in both of those runs. Uh, looking back over my scores, I can see that in the end that battle got separated by just half a point. Um, so very, very close all the way through. We talk about it, we're picking on minor little things, and sometimes it is about sacrifice for gain. Um, but I hear, mate, that we are ready, we're set, we're going to go down to the podium, we're going to spray some champagne. Exciting. So we'll send it down to Matty. Thanks for your work today, mate. Uh, my um, pleasure. Thanks for the whole me, team. For everyone at home, thanks for listening to us. We're down to Matty. Have a great one. Matty Cav, what have you got for us? Well, first off, we thought we'd uh, go and present the, of course, the Zoo Performance Pro-Am here this afternoon and because we've got our top three and they're ready to get their big checks like we were speaking about and try and slide that through the teller. Of course, we've got our podium set up. A big uh, shout-out to our fourth place, obviously, in the Zoo Performance Pro-Am, Matty Walters there, who just missed out on the podium this weekend with those issues there without that nitrous. But in third place, in the Calypso-coloured, Team Blast, Matty Murphy, come up here on the podium. Come up here and grab your Zoo Performance gear as well, mate. Congratulations. Thank you. Cheers, young fella. Grab everything we've got. We've got a skateboard there. We've got a big check as well, mate. Look, third position here at Winter Motorsport Park. Yeah, we've done pretty well. Um, we had a few problems this afternoon and snapped a tow rod in the rear end. Um, we put some booger welds on it and she held together. So we're here now, but it's good. Um, Got to give out a massive thank you to Exidi for helping me out, getting us here, and Zoo Performance, of course. They're helping out all the drifters make this happen, and good to be on the podium. Well, we'll let you get up there in your third position. There, get ready, put your stuff down, get it set up. And in second place here in the Zoo Performance Pro-Am, Kieran Ratcliffe, if you want to come up. Don't go and hide away from the camera. Come over here, mate. Look, you've even got bright... Bright race gear on. Come and grab all your gear from Zoo Performance. Second position here. Round number three. You've got to have more arms. Where's your crew? Uh, my mum, my dad, my mates over there. They've all came out, helped me out. Dad's here at every event. He hasn't missed one. My partner wasn't able to be here, Piper, which I'm a bit spewing about, but she's been watching on the live stream. She's wrapped. Um, I wouldn't be here without JDR Motorsports keeping that car singing. Um, high school, he's provided the turbo. That thing is on song. And then Finesse keeping it shiny. Zoo giving us all the parts we need. You know, we've got Sydney Truck and Trailers as well, supporting us. Um, BT Tyres, all the tyres of the world. What's it like to go into the final here? Oh, it's absolutely killing. Like, it's just... I didn't think I'd be this far. I was thinking top eight was, like, where I'd want to be, but, you know, just kept going. Look, we'll let you get your second position up here. Grab your champagne, put your stuff down, get ready for that one. And our winner of the Z Performance Pro Ham here for round number three here of the High Tech Oils Drift All Stars is Bo Gagliardi from South Australia. Come over here. Oh, the big smile on his face, too. Look at that. Cannot wipe that away. And now you're going to get that big check you were chasing earlier. Thank you. Thank you. All the gifts. Yeah, you get it all. You get everything. And the check. Don't forget the check. This is what I'm excited for. I've been waiting a long time for one of these. I've been waiting a long time for this big check. I don't care how much it's got on it. I just like that it's big. Are you going to try and bank it? Probably not. It'll probably all go in the pub tonight, but either way, it's going to be good. <laughs> Mate, a big smile on your face all weekend. What's it like coming over here to Winton? Yeah, look, it's pretty wild. It's uh, pretty close to pulling the pin on drift, and um, Zoo Performance gave us a little nudge last round and said, it was good enough to get us back out, and uh, here we are. So massive thanks to the family, the team, the sponsors, Raceworks, um, Atkins Auto. 
Look, it's just been wild, and uh, can't wait to do it all again. May well put that down, get on the podium, because there's some champagne to let off here. Of course, our Z Performance Pro-Am category here, our top three, Matty Murphy, Kim Ratcliffe, and of course, Bo Gagliardi. Come on, big round of applause for him. Pop the champagne. All right, we might head up to the commentary box very quickly, and uh, what about that, guys? Those top three there in the Zoo Performance Pro-Am. Yeah, thank you uh, for Matt, Matty down there. Well, just while they reset that podium now for the uh, High Tech Oils Pro, um, the, the Pro podium, mate, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to Queensland. We're moving up to that shortly. Um, it's a good track, and then, of course, we're going to finish up in, uh, in, in Sydney, in Sydney Motorsport Park for the final round. With luck, we're not going to have any of the COVID scenario that we've had previously. So great to see Bo there celebrating. He's done really well. He drove fantastic. And, of course, you know, a big, big handful of Zoo Performance parts. And I know you've got a fair bit on your car as well, mate. Yeah, my, car, my whole car is actually Zoo Performance from front to back, and I haven't had a single failure, any problems. So anyone that's getting the parts will not have any issues at all. And it would be, They do do a lot to support the sport, so it would be great to see drivers getting more involved in, in you know, putting that support back because they actually literally do put what most of it back into the sport. Yeah. So if you want to support your own sport, that's a company to deal with. As far as the Zoo Performance Pro-Am Championships going, like the guys are stepping up. Like five years ago... Yeah, yeah, mate, absolutely. And, and Matt and I were talking about it through the stream. I know you were busy running around trying to chase up uh, information for us in the pits, but we were talking about it, you know. I remember only a year or two back where we were, we, you know, the, for me as a judge, the, the Pro-Am Top 16 kind of, they worked themselves out with spins or oh, yeah, off lines or whatever. And not today, mate. Like, the, you know, the support from Zoo and giving these guys parts, making cars more reliable, making cars be able to progress forward, they... Absolutely, are a great supporter, and we think we thank Chase and, and the team there from the boys at Zoo Performance for um, for everything they can. Jump online, check them out, get on their, their website, have a look at the parts. They're, they're quite reasonably priced as well. You know, I've had a look. They've even they've even started making me think about maybe even giving my old R33 a little bit of a birthday and bringing it back for a bit more fun. And certainly, uh, I'll be looking to use um, some some of those Zoo Performance parts in my car when it when it starts to get a freshen up and get ready to go. But mate. Enough about Zoo Performance and their support of the Pro-Am guys. We've got High Tech Oils now supporting the Pro Series. We're going back down to Matty Cav, who's got the boys there ready for the podium. Matty Cav, over to you. Mate, plenty more champagne to be popped here at Winter Motor Raceway. And, of course, it is the High Tech Oils Pro category now that we're going to announce. And it went down to a very tough battles in that one when it came down to third position. But in fourth position, big round of applause today, Aaron Jouar. Fourth in qualifying, ends up fourth. We might have a quick word with you very quickly. It's been a big day of smoke shows. Yeah, uh, done a few burnouts today. <laughs> you had the microphone put in your mouth a lot today. Yeah, they're jamming in my mouth all day. It's like a lollipop. Look, are we going to see you in Sydney and will we have a bit of a bet going on about you and we want to see you and maybe uh, Matt Harvey or someone or Brody Mayer. Someone has to either grow a mullet and you shave yours depending on who loses. Well, I reckon Dale's misses a hairdresser, so I reckon that's the go for him. There we go. Congratulations on fourth place today. Thank you. All right, let's go up in, of course. That means that in third position here after that tight, tight battle is going to be Glenn Omerod in the 86. Come and get all this stuff. Look, you got a big check, mate. Hold on to that one. you got your skateboard as well. Look, run us through the Connect Electrical 86 has been on song all weekend. Yeah, it's been great. Dad, Dave has been keeping it up to date. The uh, tyres have been going good, fuel ready to go. Just um, happy Mother's Day to Mum. Uh, this one's for you. And um, yeah, just big thanks to Connect Electrical, Custom Craft, um, Swifts, Rocky Cano, and yeah, big thanks. You finally broken that top eight. Let's see what you can do at the next round. Yeah, we will do. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Let's well, get on the podium. Get ready for this one. And, of course, we moved on to our battle there for position one and two, and we saw what happened in that one. Of course, it was going to become between the tortoise and the hare, and... Uh, once again, it was an exciting battle. We saw it at the bend, although it was going into the final. But in second place, unfortunately, with a bit of a damaged car now, Jason Ferrin and the keeper, Reed R31 Wags. Come and get your stuff, mate. You've stepped it up again. You've gone up one more position than you did from the bend and a big smile on your face still. 
Yeah, so I got a little headache right now, but apart from that, uh, I had a great day. I didn't expect the clutch that was playing up, um, and we managed to make it last the whole time. We were normally sending it in fourth gear, so we had to drop it back to third, but it still still kept its pace, the old girl, and had a great time. Look, mate, are we going to see you in Queensland? Uh, we'll see how it goes. I think Jesse's got a bit of work ahead of him. I've got to thank the crew a lot, uh, the pit crew, and um, Josh in my ear again, and the family here. Danny on Mother's Day, stoked that you guys are here and the three boys, so and thanks, Arte. Thanks, Arte. Take your place on the podium. All right, now winner now for round number three, winner motor raceway here for the High Tech Oils Drift All-Stars Pro Category, Dale Campaign. <laughs> Big smile on your face, mate. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, definitely not the way you want to go through. I'm just glad Jason's okay. Um, I think he just got a little bit close to me on transition when connected, so uh, we'll have to look on the replay, but yeah, um, big congrats to him. He's so fast through that section. Um, yeah, who knows which way it would have gone. How tough were the battles today? Oh, it was amazing. Um, after the contact with the barrier this morning, it was a little bit uh, put off, and then, yeah, we got back in the zone, but yeah, every single battle was uh, to be fought for. Mate, go run through all your sponsors need to thank here and everyone for helping you fix the car. Uh, GH Haulage for getting us here, like, is absolutely amazing. Like, literally, we flew in, the car's here, you just can't get better than that. Um, Kumo Tyres, um, those guys are amazing. Like, it's, yeah, they've been on board for a few years now and it's, yeah, can't do it without those guys. Um, Smith Partners, uh, Einstein, um, Origin got on board, so perfect timing, I think. <laughs> um, tunes by CC, fit, PPG gearboxes, complete alignments, um, and Pulsar Turbos, um, and uh, the golf course, Kenton Valley Golf Course. So, yeah. Mate, you're running out of your sponsors, you've broken off the front bar. Yeah, I know, it's uh, looking worse for wear, so hopefully we get it, uh, get it sorted. We've got Darwin coming up, um, so yeah, hopefully we can get it looking a bit better than what it does now. All right, well, you get on the podium, you're number one there, Dale Campaign. Big shout out for our top three once again, Glenn Omeron, Jason Ferrin, and Dale Campaign, ladies and gentlemen. We'll let them pop the champagne, and we'll head back up to you in the commentary box. All right, as the boys are spraying some champagne down there, smiling faces, there always is when they're on the podium, um, Cookie. It's been great to have you as part of the show today, mate. I think you've done a fantastic job down there running around, getting us plenty of information. We can't see what's going down in the pits, neither can the people at home, and you did a wonderful job of, of just sticking microphones in people's faces and getting them to talk. So well done to you, mate. Thanks for having me as part of the team. Yeah, cheers, Dan. I really enjoyed it. It's been great. I obviously love all the banter and the band, being out with the boys anyway, so it's just a matter of yeah, sharing that with everyone. Um, looking forward to the next round. I'm going to have my bum in a seat, though. I ain't going to be doing that again. It's good for the steps on the on the Fitbit, but that's about the driving is definitely a lot more adrenaline. And I tell you what, anyone else that's interested in having a drive or getting involved in this series, do it. It is fun. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It's always an awesome vibe down there, and it's great to be to have you part of it, mate. For me, I'd definitely love to see your bum back in the seat, and uh, I'm looking forward to that being the case up in Queensland. Next round is Queensland Raceway. We're up there on the second weekend of June. Um, tickets are available. Jump onto the high tech. Drift Australia website, get your tickets through there. Um, for me, Dan Mackey, I've had a great time up here. I've loved judging this one. Really enjoy the series. I'm going to throw it back down to Matty, who's going to sign off and say farewell. Uh, but I'll see you guys in Queensland. Thanks, guys. Yeah, big shout out here from Winton Motor Raceway. We thank them for having us back here. Remembering the supercars are here in just two weeks' time, but we are back on the 16th and 17th of July. We do it all again for round number four of the High Tech Oils Drift All Stars up there in Queensland. We're going to go to the paper clip. We're going to see how that all unfolds because the championship now getting very close in both Pro and Pro Am. We can't wait for that to happen. Big shout out to everyone who's joined us here at Mo Winton Motor Raceway. We can't wait to see you back here in July, 16th and 17th up in Queensland. We will see you then.